28th. And, uh, and de you know, Sunderland just have to win their last three games and they get promoted to the Women's Super League. But sometimes it's easier said than done. But we'll hear from Mel Ray uh, before kick-off this afternoon, as well as the players here have just appeared from the dressing rooms for the, uh, for the warm-up in the uh, ever-darkening afternoon, actually. So quite a contrast to when we arrived at half past 12 when it was the, we were basking in sunshine. Now it looks like the heavens are about to, to open. Um, so we'll wait and see. Right, plenty of other things happening to... De <laughs> you, uh, you've surprised on, every... Battle, surprised battle with that corner now, but on. I'm not, not going to battle with this music anymore. Uh, there's a lot happening today. I keep on thinking... Uh, today is Saturday. Simon Pride on Total Sport last night was talking to Radio Wales football correspondent Rob Phillips and uh, said thank you for very much for giving up your Friday. So you can see we're all absolutely and utterly all confused. over the place. We're all over the place. So I'm hoping now pulling it all together and is in exactly one place and has got his hat on it is Colin White. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, I'm very much in the club of just about working out that it is not Saturday today, that it's Friday. It's Easter Friday. Good Friday. Uh, thank you to Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett. We'll be back with them in just uh, a few minutes time. A couple of early games, incidentally, in the Championship as well. One of them that's just finished has seen Bristol City beat Leicester City by a goal to nil. Anis, Anis Mehmeti, uh, about 15, 20 minutes from the end of that one. It means that Leicester missed a chance to go back top of the Championship table and could end up third by the end of today because Leeds could go three points clear of them and Ipswich could overtake them in the other early game that kicked off at 1 o'clock so it's not uh, finished yet still a good half an hour left Millwall are 1-0 up on West Bromwich Albion uh, the famous Duncan Watmore having given Millwall the lead midway through the first half no Premier League games today but eight games in that division tomorrow including Newcastle United at home to West Ham it's a lunchtime kickoff, a 12.30 kickoff at St James's Park to be precise Matthew Raisbeck and John Anderson will be on air from a half past 11 head coach Eddie Howe did his pre-match media duties this morning said uh, and this was the first question and well, one of many questions he was asked said he hopes that Sandro Tonali's ban from football will not be extended if he is found guilty of further betting offences you may well have heard yesterday that uh, he has now been charged with misconduct by the English FA he is currently halfway through a 10 month suspension for breaching gambling rules whilst playing in Italy uh, but now as I say been charged with misconduct by the English FA for allegedly placing 50 bets after he joined Newcastle last summer. Yeah, it was no surprise to us. Uh, Sandro, from day one, cooperated and was very honest with the club, with us, with the authorities and what he had done and the issues that he had. We've been supporting him through this process. We don't have any specific information to say that there's clarity on it at the moment, but we hope, and I, I certainly hope strongly for Sandro that that will be the case. I'd be hugely disappointed, I think, if that ban was extended. Yeah, we will find that out in due course. Eddie Howe also says that surgery to repair Sven Botman's torn ligament in his knee, his ACL, went well, and that Newcastle are seeking a specialist opinion on a back injury sustained by Lewis Miley. Live commentary tomorrow uh, on BBC Radio Newcastle, of course, of Newcastle against West Ham. 12.30 kick-off, 11.30 for the build-up. It is a huge weekend in non-league football as well. Almost everybody uh, up and down the pyramid playing twice across this weekend. Uh, a lot of them are Friday, Monday. A lot of them are Saturday. Monday as well. Today, Gateshead, who were utterly brilliant in midweek and beat uh, Hartlepool by seven goals to one at the International Stadium, are back at home again today. Rochdale are the visitors. That one kicks off at three o'clock. So too does Blythe Spartans at home to Curzon Ashton. Big game for Blythe. Probably just one win away from safety, uh, in relegation safety in National League North. Our featured game of the day, though, is at the First Cloud Arena, sixth against eighth in that National League North. South Shields against Spennymoor. Paul Dixon, I think you could be witnessing a cracker this afternoon. Well, I hope you're right, Colin. Um, can I just say, Colin, the sun's shining. Um, <laughs> I haven't got my coat on. Uh, I'm absolutely well, first of all, it's that a welcome it is to sunny. The, uh, the pitch is wonderful. The, uh, and and what time is it now? About half past two, Colin. The ground's nearly full. Yeah. It's Break absolutely is incredible. It is. To I mean, in the Spennymoor fans, I think uh, they've been allowed 450. I think they 450 are already in the ground. But you're right, Colin. This is the makings of a real <coughs> top-notch game this afternoon, and um, especially for Robert Briggs as well. Robert it's good to Briggs is 400 be game well, of South Shields. They're going to do yeah, a presentation just, just before the game, which. Yeah. Um, 
the child he served because he's been well, here well, since well. he was 18 and he's a big favourite oh, of South Shields. Oh, the best one, yeah, and, it's, really. I know we don't talk about Spennymoor very much, if at all, really, because they're not one of our teams, but they are playing one of our teams today and they have had an incredible Hello, Kevin Taylor, good to see you too. Uh, welcome along. They were allegation trouble about <laughs> three, four months ago. Yeah, yeah, really time, it seems, has it? put them in a, in a brilliant position as well. Blue and internationals. Spartans don't go down, mm. then we, hey, we, we should them? be okay in that division. But South Shields have suddenly picked themselves back up again. They were looking a bit flaky form run, uh, form yep. wise, two or three weeks ago, really. Certainly two or three months ago. Yep. They, they'll be disappointed if yep. they don't make the playoffs now, I think, won't they? Well, that's, that's right. I mean, um, South Shields with Paul Black at up front, who scored in the last three games, and the set is absolutely flying. But Spennymoor, you're right, Graham Lee's done a marvellous job. Um, his father was a terrific manager who managed Gated. In the last seven games, uh, they're undefeated, so you're right. I mean, if, if Spennymoor win this afternoon, they'll go above South Shields. But, uh, Colin, it's got the makings of a real top-notch non-league game this afternoon. I'm looking forward to it. And so you should be. Paul Dixon, thank you very much indeed. It is very, very tight for the playoff places in National League North. South Shields are sixth on 65 points behind Boston United on goal difference. But then there are three teams on 64, two teams on 62, all the way down to Warrington in 12th on 61 points. So it is going to be an exciting final uh, five or six games of the season. South Shields have got five left, including today. Uh, Spennymoor and a few others have got six remaining. Uh, all the Northern Premier League games in the, in the Premier Division and the East Division are all tomorrow and Monday. Uh, there are six... <coughs> Northern League games today, though a couple of them kicked off at 12 o'clock. Lots of different kickoff times across the across the day and across the weekend. So we'll go through all of those in our local football roundup at 5:45. One more football story from today before we move away from football. Xabi Alonso says he will remain in his role as Bayer Leverkusen manager next season. He believes the club is the right place to be as a young coach. He'd of course been heavily linked with the manager's job at Liverpool, one of his former clubs. After Jurgen Klopp said he'll stand down at the end of the season, Bayer Leverkusen are on the brink of their first Bundesliga <coughs> title, and they are unbeaten in all competitions this season. Uh, but uh, Xavi Alonso will not be the next Liverpool manager. Away from football to rugby then. Newcastle Falcons at home to Leicester Tigers at 7.45 tonight. Live commentary uh, that you can hear on the BBC Sport website and app with Dean Gray and Ian Stafford. The Falcons still looking for that elusive first Premiership win of the season. Consultant Director of Rugby Steve Diamond is expecting another tough encounter. Well, they've got some world-class players, certainly the half-backs, so they've got two wonderful kickers, so I think the ball will be in the air quite a lot. Certainly the if the weather is inclement, to say the least. They have a mixed game at the moment. They tried to move it wide last week, which I don't think they'll do against us, and Gloucester manhandled them. Uh, I, so I think they'll stick to the kicking game, get us in the corners and drive that mall over. I think that'll be their, um, their plan. Uh, we shall see Falcons against the Tigers, 7.45 tonight at Kingston Park. Like I say, live commentary on the BBC Sport website with Dean Gray and Ian Stafford from around about half past seven. In terms of local fixtures, lots across the weekend, but last night, Newcastle Eagles men in the basketball were beaten by 90 points to 84 in the BBL at home to Gl Caledonia Gladiators. Uh, they had a three-point lead going into the final quarter of that one as well. Further afield sports-wise then in tennis, Andy Murray will miss events in April, but there is still no time scale in his return from the ankle injury that he picked up this week at the Miami Open. He said previously this year he doesn't plan to play much past this summer. In Rugby Union, winger Jasmine Joyce... Hi, Gordon. Cheers for the team. Afternoon. Thanks for the, the team news, Six mate. Nations tomorrow. That's through injury. She's replaced by Lisa Newman. Uh, in cricket... I will pin that to the John top. Lewis, so not the former Darren head coach, incidentally. Different John Lewis. That's says uh, they've Gordon given a proper test see, uh, to some fringe news. players um, in New Zealand. New kit back to Hummer. Yeah, I know. I know. Cannot wait. It's my favourite strip of all time, that kid. Overnight. Love the Hummel Tops. They won the final one in that series by five wickets. The one-day series between the two uh, nations starts on Sunday. And sticking with cricket, Durham have made a signing today. A young man with a very famous surname, 17-year-old Hayden Mustard, son of Durham legend Phil Mustard, has put pen to paper on a two-year contract. He'd progressed through the Durham Academy. Uh, he was also part of the Durham squad that toured Zimbabwe uh, last month in the early part of this month. Uh, England under-19s World Cup representative as well as Hayden Mustard. So he has signed his first senior contract at Durham. And we finish with a couple of rugby league results from a big weekend in the Super League. Last night, Castleford Tigers beaten by 26 points to six at home by Leeds Rhinos. All the points in that game coming in the second half. It was nil-nil at half-time, which doesn't happen very often in rugby league. Uh, just finished 
finish today. The Hull Derby, Hull KR have beaten Hull FC by 34 points to 10. Uh, and then a big one. It's always a big one. St. Helens against Wigan kicks off at 3 o'clock. But we go back to another game that kicks off at 3 o'clock at the Cardiff City Stadium. It is Sunderland away to Cardiff City in the Championship. Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett are back in just a tick. What happened? Birmingham exploded. On BBC iPlayer. You look like somebody who could be somebody. I want to be a poet. <laughs> a poet? If I wrote the words and you sung them, and this skinhead girl wrote the music. From the creator of Peaky Blinders. It's time a son of mine stepped up. Go and do your duty. I no longer just want this band to work. I need it to work. If you don't get away, you just become what everybody already thinks you are. This town. We'll take over the old world. Starts Sunday on BBC iPlayer. Yeah, definitely, Kev. Chris Minton from sport. Tokyo. North Hello, East. how are you doing Nick from Tokyo? Bones how was the weather in Tokyo? BBC Radio Newcastle. And well, before we joined Colin, we were saying how the sky was darkening here and it was looked like we were going moving into dusk. We have just had the most almighty shower of rain. Downpour. I mean, the yeah. downpour lasted the duration of Colin's sports bulletin. He's just finished and the sun's coming out again. I, honestly, I've just spoken to a, one of the reporters who works here regularly. And she says to me, you do know it does rain here all the time. It just rains. <laughs> it does, Can't doesn't it? it? Yeah, it's nice just see, uh, Patrick it's Roberts Roberts back, at least. Uh, it's extraordinary. And we were talking yesterday about Ninian Park and the games we used to do there, oh. and you used to play there. I don't think we ever covered a game there when it was warm. And it, invariably, there was one afternoon in April, we had snow, we had oh, rain, we had, we had sunshine, we had the works. <laughs> So uh, there you go. That's good. We're doing a great job for Cardiff's tourist board here, aren't we? More people coming in. Um, it could well be because I can see where the Sunderland players are warming up here Thanks now. From Oz. There are just five parallel lines marked out on the pitch where they've been running up and down. It's interesting so when we're crook. talking about the game and we've had again, showers we, for the we're last. Strip. Um, Sunderland have got to score first. Yes, I think you're probably right. Three bloody months. If Mark indeed anybody answer. scores this afternoon, because that's what Pride and Mark are this morning, but it's um, gone over a nil again. nil. Uh, the Sunderland team, three changes Patterson, Hume, Ballard, O'Neill returns, Styles, Neil, Equa, Rig, Aushish, Barr, and Jove. The bench is Bishop, Pembele, Bursto, Mundell, Gelda, Elise, Roberts, Dak, and Amir. Corey Evans is not in the squad, but he is here. He's travelled with the squad. For whatever reason, they decide that it um, might be, a bit might too, be too soon. Well, again, he's got a chance of playing against his former team on Monday. Yeah, exactly. He might be looking to Monday's game. Bearing in mind, we've got these two games in quick succession. Uh, we'll hear from Mike Dodds in just a moment. Cardiff City, Ethan Horfaft, American in goal. He was at uh, Luton Town last season. Signed in January from Nottingham Forest. Back for Perry and G. Nat Phillips, who's on loan from Liverpool. Dimitros Gutas and Josh Wilson e Esbrand, who's on loan from Manchester City. He played for Coventry last season. He was an unused substitute in the playoff final against Luton. But definitely since the arrival of Nat Phillips from Liverpool and partnering Gutas, we're told that the back four has really tightened up for Cardiff City. Uh, Ryan Wintle and Joe Rawls. Joe Rawls comes back into the starting lineup. He's just signed a new contract here. At Cardiff, he's been at Cardiff since uh, 2010. Uh, Josh Bowler, Callum O'Dowder comes in, the Republic of Ireland international. Carl and Grant, who's on loan from West Bromwich Albion, and also coming in this afternoon is uh, Ruben Colwell, who's got a handful of Welsh caps, but told he is the one flair player in the Cardiff City lineup. Um, so it's interesting that he's included from the start this afternoon because I understand he hasn't played that many games. They've used him sparingly. I heard Rob Phillips, the Radio Wells correspondent on Total Sport last night, saying he had quite a lot of problems last season with a growth spur and they've used him sparingly this season. But he's the one player that offers them something a little bit different. Yeah, um, he's most probably one of them players who's got a little bit of flair, who can make, most probably make things happen. But uh, again, we, we're going to stress that one of our concerns will be set pieces. Um, you know, you know, one of the lads who jumps out at you is the lad Phillips. He's a big lad on loan from Liverpool. You know, what we can't afford to be doing is giving away silly free kicks, especially around that 18-yard box. Yeah, Phillips six foot three, Gutas six foot four. Right, let's hear for the uh, first time this afternoon from interim head coach Mike Dodds. Only one place really to start this week. 
Mike, firstly, who's, who's fit? Who can travel to Cardiff? Um, yeah, good question. Um, so Pat's done um, three or four sessions now. So, so Pat training with the group. Obviously, we've got to be um, mindful of the fact that he's had two hamstring injuries this year, and we've got to be mindful of that in terms of obviously we've got two games in a short space of time, or three games if you um, if you include Saturdays, the following Saturday. Um, obviously, Corey's been training kind of full contact now. So Corey's back with the group. Aji played some minutes for the um, under 21s the other night. So Aji's been back training. Um, Jack's still a question mark at the moment. Unfortunately, it hasn't. Um, <coughs> we were hoping, based on his history, that that would. That yeah, would only playing for pride now. Yeah, that's what it looks like, doesn't it? Chris worried about set pieces. We've been terrible with set pieces, haven't we? Jack's out on the um, All season, really, really bad. Bradley Dark. Yeah, if I'm on, you wonder why I'm on mute for the uh, kick off. It's just that me boys watching the telly and every now and again this music appears on the YouTube channel. And um, YouTube, my live stream will pick it up and I'll get like uh, copyright notifications which appear to edit them out. So I'll just mute it. Yeah, so Rusin, um, it's a real strange one. So Rusin took a contact injury against um, Southampton. Southampton. He came in, came out and trained. I can't remember what day it was. Maybe the Tuesday afterwards, and complained of um, some issues with his calf. Um, based on the specialists, they they still think it'll be a couple of weeks. Um, so we we should see Rusin before the end of the season. But I think the reality is it will probably be the the latter end of the season, unfortunately for for Naz. And Jensen sealed. He was going to have the scan and just to establish whether he needed surgery or. or yeah, or like. so it was the worst case scenario really for Jensen. So he's gonna he's gonna have to have an up. So they're looking for kind of six to nine months for Jensen. Um, you know, I've never, as I said to you previously, Paul and Jessica, I've never experienced anything like this since my time at the football club. But as I keep saying, it is what it is. You know, I, I feel for Jensen because just when he was going to get his opportunity. Um, this happens, but sometimes you know these things happen for for young footballers, and it's going to be a challenge for him. He seems in a good place. He's processed what's what the the outcome is, but unfortunately for him, it's going to be a prolonged period of time out. And we were talking after the Queens Park Rangers game that this sort of fortnight is a bit like a circuit breaker, a chance to reassess, to to, to recharge. I mean, how how does it feel? Does it feel like you you sort of Having another start and you know another burst for the final eight games. Yeah, um, look, I was I was really disappointed with the QPR game. I think of the five games I've taken, that was the worst in terms of performance. I was really disappointed with with most aspects of that game. I think it's good, you know. Obviously, we've had a number of number of the lads away on international duty, and I think a change of scenery sometimes can be good for them. Obviously, we've only had a handful back today. We've got a handful back in tomorrow, so they'll start filtering back in from from wherever they've been. Um, but the rest of the group have trained really, really well. So yeah, we've um, we've had a good couple of weeks. We've got you know three games in particular. The next three games where we come come up against opposition that will be really, really well organised. So we're going to have to be miles better on the ball than what we were against QPR. And obviously the addition of some of the some of the guys coming back from injury, you know, pads the squad out a little bit more. You know, we we were we were beyond thin really before the international break, and obviously having them back in just on the grass in the training session just gives everyone a boost. Total Sport North East On the station with Newcastle and Sunderland commentary exclusively live. BBC Radio Newcastle More to come from Mike Dodds before 3 o'clock. Mel Ray as well. Just watching the players warming up uh, in probably every sense of the word. In the rain again we've had another shower. Good to see Agilise in amongst the... Uh, the back four, just having a warm-up. He's on the substitutes bench this afternoon, and someone was telling me last weekend that Aji, I mean, it's the, the character of the years. Where he lives, he comes out on the streets and has a knockabout yeah. with the kids. A just remarkable character. Just wants to play football, live and, lives and breathes it. Lovely, lovely man. Pierre Ecker out there, worth, worth mentioning as well. He's been, uh, he's been named the Foundation of Lights Community Champion of the Year for all the work that he does and the pair of them Aji and Pierre I think they, they spend a lot of time together and they are the sort of characters that embrace the community yeah definitely so and again you know especially where they're coming from coming from down south 
coming up to the north and you usually hear that they find it difficult to settle but these two uh, you know what they have done they've got involved in the community we've been watching the groundsman forking the pitch as well and we're just wondering why to be honest i don't, I, I don't know it makes them busy <laughs> huh? they're just they're just wandering <laughs> around the penalty area way to our right forking the pitch and there's another downpour and uh, there's another one on the way yeah there is a hint of blue sky over the distance uh, but at the moment it's pouring with rain again and the players uh, are well given their due they're not running away from it they're still warming up um, right the women's championship that's hotting up in every sense of the word following uh, the weekend's game Sunderland beating Durham 5-3 that was a humdinger of a game and three games left could all culminate at Sellers Park on April the 28th against Crystal Palace, who are second in the table with the game in hand. But ahead of the weekend's game against the Championship's bottom club, Watford women, I've been chatting to the Sunderland women's head coach, Mel Ray. Mel, Sunday, um, bonkers. You might want to revisit the word bonkers <laughs> as head coach, but um, that was some game. Some game for the neutral, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, eight goal thriller. Uh, Probably what you want for a local derby. Very exciting uh, to be a part of, and ultimately the, the most important bit was that we came away with, with all three points. Uh, I was really pleased with most parts of the game. A little bit slack on on the goals that we've conceded, but you know when you when you just want three points, you almost just want to get it done and move on to the next one. I was going to say you be delighted with the five that you scored, but the three that you conceded. That, you know, I think. The Durham coach said, you know, you, you, you pinch yourself, you've gone away from home, scored three goals and, and lost the game. Yeah, I thought we started really well, you know, going 2-0 up. Uh, you know, all five goals coming from open play as well. Really creative in that final third. And it's been coming, to be fair. It's been coming for a while. And, uh, you know, get, get ourselves in a good position, 2-0 up and concede a really sloppy goal just before half-time. We were talking this morning about wonder what the dynamic would have been like in the second half if we had held the 2-0 lead in uh, going into the second half. But... It is what it is, and you know we learn from these errors that we make, and hopefully stronger for it. And perhaps the right time to have a result like that, with three games left, sort of getting the twitchy period of the season. Three games to go. Uh, not a, not a lot of room for error, uh, but finally found our shooting boots, and and we you know ruthless in front of goal, and we got to take that confidence in the in the Watford on Sunday. I remember. We were talking about this at the start of the season when you're on a very good run, you're winning games. The dynamic now is, is very different, isn't it? Because now there is something very tangible at the end of the season for you to achieve. Yeah, well, we're well aware of it. We spoke about it as a group and, you know, we want to try and go and win it. Uh, we've put ourselves in a marvellous position to do that. It's in our hands and we know that. Uh, we know we've got to win all three games in order to do that. So. You know, we full focus on Watford because we know there's no room for error. How do you feel personally about the achievement? I mean, I, I know you won't be saying you've achieved anything yet until the end of the season, but you're very, very close to achieving something. At the beginning of the season, people would have been incredibly surprised at, at what you've done. Yeah, I'm really proud of the group. I'm really proud of the staff that we've got because they've bought into a process, uh, they've bought into a vision of what we wanted to do. and. You know, ultimately the performances have got way in, the, in this position and we need three really good, strong performances to see over the line because, like you say, we've achieved nothing yet. Yes, we've had a fantastic season and we can all be proud of that, but I think you've got to take these opportunities when they present themselves and, you know, what, what a wonderful be at the end of the season if we, if we can win all three games. And I'm, I know you won't take Watford for granted, even though they're bottom of the table, because I think you've had, I suppose, a lesson just the other week with Lewis that you, that you can see how difficult some of those games can be. Yeah, and London City, you know, where we got nothing out of the game. So, you know, we've learnt our lessons and, you know, we know we have to prepare properly, but we also have to deliver when we get on the pitch and, and put in them performances like we've seen on Sunday. Um, I dare say you are enjoying it. I think you, from what you said about Sunday's game, even though it was helter-skelter, it, it was enjoyable to watch. It was. I, w I wouldn't say it was enjoyable when the third goal went in and it was 3-3, but, uh, you know, there were some really nice moments and, you know, it was fantastic to see, you know, nearly 15, 000, um, 1,500 people in inside Hetton, uh, the unbelievable flag displays, you know, there was a real atmosphere about the place and that's what we wanted to feel like every week because, 
they certainly help you get results when, when it's busy inside. Rusty yeah. Mackham, how are you doing? As well. I mean, for her to get the Good afternoon, and Cabby and everyone this gorgeous Friday. I think the week as well, just the icing on the cake. Yeah, she's, you know, a it's confidence the consistency, isn't it? And it's, it's, you know, Mary's still a young oh, player and, know. you know, she's worked really hard team. off the... Law of average is still low with you, we know that. ...games and that's what she wants to do. She wants to score goals, she wants to contribute through through crosses and in key passes in front of goal and, you know, it was an all-round performance and well-deserved to be player of the week. Total Sport North East BBC Radio Newcastle Mel Ray reflecting on last weekend looking ahead to Watford on Sunday Benno uh, how how big an achievement would it be if Mel Ray won the championship this season well I've got to say if they do it she'll be up there for manager of the year because nobody was expecting Sunderland to be where they are and that's including myself including all the ones who we, we you know we pick a team at the start of the, at the start of the season don't we we weren't expecting Sunderland to be where they are and that's credit to Mel Ray and the team and you know if they can get it over the line she needs to be maybe manager them manager of the year. And, and she said it herself in the the preview uh, the other day this is a tougher division this season as well than last year yes you know you look at the quality what's in the division but also what she has been able to do is develop young players you know you look at the team what she's got and that's credit to the team and the players themselves the way they've taken things on board and got on with the job and uh, they're in a great position now and it's just you know being focused and we'll have a black and white basically badge. win your next three games I don't want to, I don't want to win your next three games and the rewards are big honestly, yeah. well I guess you'd argue the next two are more than winnable against Watford who are bottom and Charlton at home the Crystal Palace game's going to be the big one that's going to yeah, be the big it, one it's going to be the big one but also them two what you've just mentioned are winnable ga- uh, they are winnable games especially where they are but you, you've got to win them you've got to win them you've got to keep to the level the standards of levels what you are at the present moment and you know continue and going into the Crystal Palace game with confidence right it's Friday afternoon just to confirm uh, and we're minutes away from kickoff at the Cardiff City Stadium three changes for Sunderland O'Neill's back in Equus back in and Rig is uh, in as well Patterson in goal Hume Ballard O'Neill and Styles. Neil and Equa, Rig, Ashish Bar and Job is the starting 11. Uh, Ballard and Hume both played in the week for Northern Ireland in a very creditable 1 0 win at Hampden Park against Scotland. Um, and uh, Rig's been away as well. Uh, Job has been rested basically. A couple of days in, but for the, me- the majority of the international break, Job has had a break. And I think we all would accept that it's something he probably needed. Oh, he needed it. It's and again, it'll be interesting to see how he goes on today. Um, I think he's going to play as a out-and-out striker today. But hopefully that rest which he's been able to get under his belt will do him the world of good. Right, so the, the flag bearers uh, are kneeling with the flags over their shoulders. Interesting to see that all of them are boys, actually. There are no girls in the... Oh, no, there's one girl away to our left. I think she's a girl. Uh, in the t- <laughs> be careful. I, be am careful. Be, I am being careful. Be careful. I'm, I'm absolutely well, not. I honestly, uh, I'm, I'm not uh, sure. You, no, it's a boy. They're all boys. <laughs> um, anyway, let's move on. I think it's probably best to. Uh, yeah. Let's hear some more from uh, Mike Dodds. Mike Dodds can dig me out of the hole I've just dug myself. Uh, more now from Sunderland's interim head coach. You touched on it as well last time um, before Chris Mark Rangers about. Hello, the Keith. Welcome along, mate. How are you doing from Western Australia? Hello, Razzle Clark. List and how you, be how are you doing? Are you well? Coming in before the end of the season, has there been Almost any Easter weekend? change in that, or do you, or do you still see yourself now being here for the final eight games? Yeah, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, the, the sunny here you conversation are, that was um, take the team to the end of the season. If we find an ideal candidate between now and then, obviously we'll let you know. Um, I'm comfortable with whatever the outcome is. Um, obviously, my priority is what win games for football, so. I'm not thinking about who the, the next head coach is with all due respect to that person. Um, we need a result and we need we need a result really, really quickly. So the next the next game and the next three games are gonna be really important for the for the remainder of the season. And from, and from your point of view as well, Christian has said that um, whoever comes in now, the 
can bring their own staff with them. I mean, are you comfortable with that? Because obviously that could have an impact on on your role and what you do. Yeah, yeah. So I'm more than comfortable with it. And that was, that was the case with Mick as well. I think um, bum, 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 there was bum, 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 bum. a conversation with Mick around... Um, being, prediction, I'm um, going to go for a 1-1 one, one draw. And then we were staffing with him. Um, but he would obviously come initially by it himself. Ain't gonna be so easy that was to always the case with Mick. It's not going to be easy for, for us, is it? It didn't happen. So nothing changed from when I took the team last time and then Mick came in. Um, and nothing's changed this time, really, um, in terms of uh, my position at football club. Um, and Cardiff, I mean, like we really, really you, you wet sort of hit, hit the team Cardiff, that are like. finding form again. I know they lost the, the Derby and <coughs> Swansea, but they'd had a very good run, four or five games leading up to that. So it's probably not the ideal time to be playing them. Yeah, look, really well organised. We similar in terms of the QPR game in terms of the, you know they, they put bodies behind the ball but they they're not bodies behind the ball for body's sake you know they're um they're really well organised really well coached out of possession they're a they're a huge set and set pieces which we spoke about with the group and we, you know work that we we're going to have well, to fifty one people in the um, but ultimately we've got the channel already, already. thanks very much click the thumbs up um, sometimes the international break it helps is the channel massively it's just click the subscribe button the next game to correct the last game. Um, I was really disappointed with how good, how poor we were with the ball. So you know, we've uh, spoke around. You know, we're going to have to be better with the best ball. Best one to play for the lads, Tony Moore. So yeah, Moore. Tony really well Moore. coached class, wasn't he, Tony Moore? Is, is yeah, great. love Tony Moore. Out of what, what he's yeah, done, I have to say as well. Um, I think, I think hit two thousand subscribers. And you know, they they last are week. in form. Obviously, the so last game was a derby I'm game. I'm absolutely um, over the moon with that. So thanks everybody for your support and stuff. I don't think you can read into absolutely class so much passion and there's so many factors that go into those types of games it's the pre the games prior to that that we've watched a lot of and like you said really well organized threat hello there's how are you doing really afternoon really car individuals at the top end of the pitch um I I your score as well one more a lot of people are asking yeah, me yeah um, thank you for bringing this have to you me how do you think you know we've got it i'm going to go for a point how his uh, um, recovery's going <laughs> yeah, yeah again um, law of average is still would you yeah, win so Tony, Tony, he's back home, we can't go the rest of the um, season without winning, one, is winning any games can we massive for, for him uh, and his family um, Peter Savage how are you doing yeah Colin Pasco but I think his I met Colin Pasco as well <laughs> so um, hopefully when um, when when that win comes hopefully I'll pop round and we'll grab a coffee and we'll have a catch up so um, he wants me to concentrate on the job as, as everyone knows I've got nothing but admiration and gratitude for everything that he has done for me and continues to do for me so yeah he's um he's back home i don't know details in terms of how everything yeah, went he loves the club to tony and oliver norman as well we were due to catch up for a coffee at some point but he wants me to concentrate on the job first total sport northeast nick barnes and gary bennett mbe bbc radio newcastle five minutes away from kickoff still waiting for the teams to emerge from the tunnel here at the Cardiff City Stadium where of course last Easter, it was Easter Monday Sunderland won 1-0 a uh, goal from Dennis Serkin on the hour gave them victory Gonna mute that because of the music and stuff. Uh, Malcolm Crosby, yeah, got us to Wembley. Leighton James, yeah. Yeah, Michael Bale, eh? Money for blood and now, like. Money for now. I'm just waiting for the music to uh, do its thing. Any music YouTube will just pick it up and it's a pain in the backside.
He seemed a really nice, um, a nice guy, Malcolm Crosby, as well. Sorry, good luck to the SCFC women, but really I don't care. The, this is the real thing. Sorry to sound sexist. I don't think they're being sexist at all. To be honest with you, I don't think there's hardly any interest in the women's game at all. It's just the way it is. Um, Diaz says, I hope everyone is having a lovely Easter weekend. Enjoy chocolate eggs. Absolutely. Um, yep, he's met Malcolm Crosby, really nice guy. Hello, Billy Fly. Hi, Cabby. A point would be nice. Absolutely would it. Julian... Gonzalez, hi Cabby. Welcome, how are you doing? Right, I'm going to mute myself now and now I'll put the commentary back on. There we go. Sunderland's bench this afternoon is uh, Bishop, Pembele, Burstow, Mundell, Yelda, Alise, Roberts, Dak and Amir. I mentioned earlier, no Corey Evans in the squad today. He's here. But we expect to see him probably in the squad on Monday for the home game against Blackburn Rovers. Once again, they've got the music on again. Hurry up and get the music out the road, will you? So I can just carry on. Gotta wait until the music's done. It's silly, isn't it? This copyright carry on. I mean, I'm not making any money from the music itself. Do you know what I mean? It's like. Right, are we ready now? No more music? <laughs> Let's go. Oh dear, I give up. The, um,. We were talking before the game today. What, what a, you know, the expense for these Sunderland fans to get to the game today. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's incredible. Uh, it is amazing. And the numbers that they turned up this afternoon again. So all credit to them. Many left at five o'clock this morning to get to the game. The game's underway. Sunderland kicked off there, defending the goal to our right. Patterson in his yellow, the team in their red and white stripes. And uh, Cardiff, as I mentioned before, all in blue. The ball is on halfway at the moment. And it's poked forward by Luke O'Neill out towards the right wing. Chris Rigg wide on that touchline. The ball's out for a throw to Sunderland, which Hume <laughs> takes to Neil. Forwards then to Rigg, back to Dan Neil. Tried to get it up towards Job Oshish. It looks like in the centre at the moment, with Barr yeah, out on the left. The and Job's the yeah, Job's the out and out yeah. front man, isn't he? And Oshish will play as the number ten. Effectively, as he makes a run, and O'Neill tries to find Rig, and that's run away straight from him behind for a Cardiff goal kick. Cardiff, this this stadium, of course, hosted the Wales Poland Euro 2024 playoff on Tuesday night, which went to penalties. And uh, different atmosphere this afternoon. It's the Sunderland fans you can hear, not the Cardiff. Yeah, there's plenty of spaces here, isn't there? There is a lot of space. A lot of empty seats. Maybe a mark of the season for Cardiff, like Sunderland, probably not going anywhere. As they break down the right here, Josh Bowler, oh, who's on loan from Nottingham Forest, he finds uh, Colwell, who whips the ball into the back of the six-yard box, which is headed away by Luke O'Neill. Out for a throw on this right-hand side. And uh, Ruben Colwell, he's six foot four. His socks are rolled down around his ankles at the moment. He's heading into the centre and G's going to take the throw on the right-hand side here. Cole were making a nuisance of himself. A few runs here. The ball picked up, though, on the right by... Oh. Well, foul on Bowler. What did we say, Nick? Set pieces. Don't give away set pieces. Around the 18-yard box. All of a sudden, you've got to defend this. You know, you look at the two big lads going in there. Phillips and Gutas. Yeah, Styles just caught. And you've also Josh got Bowler. Cole well. Colwell as well. You've got three lads who are six foot two, six foot three plus. Ryan Wintles and uh, club captain Joe Rawls, who signed a new contract this week. He's been here since 2010. 
rolls over the free kick at the moment, steps back a few yards, he's been injured of late. Wintle's just to his left, and uh, two outside the box, Colwell's one of them. Rawls swings this in towards the far Good post, header. headed away by Job. Comes out to Colwell, who lays it back into the almost the centre circle. And uh, there is played down oh. the right here for Rawls of the penalty area, rolls it back into the box, but uh, Rigg hooks it away up uh, towards, the, in the end, uh, Ethan Horpath, the American international goalkeeper signed from Nottingham Forest in January, plays it across to Josh Wilson Esbrand, the left back on loan from Manchester City. He gets the ball back again on that far side, spent last season at uh, Reims and the uh, end of the season before at Coventry, when uh, Coventry won, I say last season, the beginning of this season at Reims, last season at Coventry. He uh, was an unused sub in the playoff final. Here's Barr trying to get down the left side of midfield, halfway inside the Cardiff half. As she's just tackled by <coughs> Ng, Perry Ng, and it's a throw which Styles will take, finding Job, uh, just trying to back in to Matt Phillips, but uh, the ball is uh, hooked away, and it's played up to halfway. And here's Colwell out to bowler on the touchline in front of Mike Dodd, swings the ball back across to Wilson Esbrand, who's got rig on his shoulder, and he plays it back then to Dimitrios Goutas, the Greek international centre-half. <coughs> plays it across to <coughs> Nat Phillips, that's Nat Phillips, six foot three on loan from Liverpool. Goutas across the face of Aushish, Back to Phillips. Back to Gutas. Gutas bringing it uh, eventually up towards halfway. Playing it back in the middle to Phillips now wide to Ng. Ng looking for the run down the right wing here of Carl and Grant on loan from West Bromwich Albion, but back to Ballard. Hooks it across to Hume, trying to close him down. Callum O'Dowder. Republic of Ireland International. O'Neill picks it up and brings it away down the right wing. Still going, O'Neill, but then he's oh. robbed by Wilson Esbrand. And O'Neill's now still stranded in the Cardiff half, slowly making his way back. And Barr intercepts the ball, leaves it for Aushish. Taps it back to Styles. Styles into the middle of his own half to Dan Ballard. Ballard forward now to Equa on the right side of the centre circle, through to Job, just ahead of him. Back to Equa, now to Dan Neal. Neal out on the left-hand side to Barr. Barr back inside to Dan Neal. Neal trying to slip it through to Aushish. Cut out, though, intercepted by Wintle. Back behind him to Gutas and back again to Horfath, the American goalkeeper, who's in a predominantly black kit with orange, bright orange boots. It's passed out here to Joe Rawls. Rawls... Wide on the left to Wilson Esbrand, looking for the run of O'Dowda, but uh, Hume intercepts. It's a throw in the sixth minute to Cardiff City. It's nil-nil. We're live on BBC Radio Newcastle tomorrow, 11:30. Tomorrow is Saturday. Build up to the 12:30 kick. Apparently, <laughs> the 12:30 kick off between Newcastle and West Ham, and we're back on Monday afternoon, two o'clock at the Stadium of Light for the three o'clock game against Blackburn Rovers. And here is Rawls again on halfway, wide on the left, Wilson Esbran back to Gutas. Gutas across to Ng, taps it to Wintle, wide to Bowler, and Bowler now bringing this into the Sunderland half, leaves it for Ryan Wintle. And he leaves it for Rawls. Rawls forwards to O'Dowda. And O'Dowda taps it to Wilson Esbrand. Back inside to O'Dowda. O'Dowda tackled, though, by Hume. Throw to Cardiff City. Back to Gutas. On the left wing, in the Sunderland half, inside to Wintle. Back into the Cardiff half to Gutas. And forwards onto halfway to Colwell. 21 years old from Neath just down the South Wales Peninsula from here. 
eight caps, joined the academy at eight years old. Certainly an exciting prospect as far as Cardiff City are concerned. The ball's come back to Patterson, rolls it to Dan Ballard. Ballard, Colwell goes to close him down, he passes now well, a little dangerously yeah. to Dan Neal, who was under pressure immediately from Carl and Grant. It comes back to Patterson, he gets the ball clear, and Matt, Nat Phillips heads it back to Horpath in goal. I'm always, I'm always hesitant when I've seen them playing out from the back because you just think it's, it's just asking for trouble, isn't it? Yeah. Sometimes. And you've seen that teams now know how Sunderland Completely want to play from the back. Straight close down, straight yeah, away. Close don't down they? straight away. So you're putting pressure on yourselves. Here's Phillips across to Gutas, the left edge of the Cardiff penalty area, swings it out to the right wing, and G brings it down in front of Barrow, stabs it out in front of Errol Bullet, the Turkish but German-born coach who uh, arrived in the summer from uh, Turkey, where he'd been coaching. Now across to the left wing again, Odauda, again another with uh, their socks, oh, it's, uh, Colwell with his socks rolled down, sorry. Bowler is the, the other, I was going to say, who's playing with his socks rolled down out on this right wing, the 25-year-old on loan from Forrest. It's back in the Cardiff half, though, on the left with Rawls. Forwards to Wilson Esbrand looking for Grant. Behind him is O'Dowda. O'Dowda on the left wing with Wilson Esbrand, who's trying to cut inside. But the ball just flicked away from him by Hume to Equa. Now Neil through the middle oh. to Aushisha. He just passes the ball here to Bowler, looking for Styles. It was a little bit too casual. And uh, Bowler now cutting he'll inside shoot, at the back of shoot. the area. Shoots low, and it skims the side netting. Yeah. Well, that was all from that misplaced pass. Yeah. From Ashish, all of a sudden, cannot re react, couldn't get back. And again, Bowler, you know he wants to get in on his left foot. Straight away, you know that. Yeah. Here is uh, Ballard in the area. Colwell went to close him down. Ballard plays it wide. Hume just short of the halfway line. O'Dowder goes to close him down. Hume manages to get it through here now to Rig. Rolls it on, looking for Job in the penalty area. It's just cut out by Gutas, out to Wilson Esbrand, and one back then by Styles to Neil. Neil in the middle, just outside the penalty area. Blue shirts in front of him, lays it to Styles. <coughs> Styles takes it forward, runs it in here, Rig. Oh, he tried to whip his left foot round it, but was just uh, unlucky. Just knocked off balance, and the ball rolls back to the goalkeeper. Nil-nil, and we played uh, ten and a half minutes almost here at the Cardiff City Stadium. Out to Rawls, onto his left, and uh, oh, Gutas always keeping the ball away to Aushish. Job could be Get in the, the penalty target. area here, trying to go, oh, he's gone down, and a penalty's been given. A he's push, a says Jeremy Simpson. The referee says Job Ooh. was pushed. It's in the 11th minute. Tell Straight away, he ran across and gave the penalty. Much anger from the... Cardiff coach who felt Looking perhaps it was a little bit too easy. He, he seemed did, to go he did down have his very hand on his back. He did go down easy, but yeah. he did have his hand on his back. And uh, Jeremy Simpson, as I say, had no hesitation in pointing to the spot. Norwich nil, Plymouth one. Well, Aushish is going to take the penalty kick. Dan Neal's come down for a conversation with Mike Dodds. Errol Bullet still arguing with a fourth official and assistant. Jeremy Simpson's walked into the back. Well, if he's of the penalty of area, it, all in black. He is the referee. He must be confident of taking it, Ashish. Yep, Ashish doesn't quite step to the back of the penalty area. Ashish against Ethan Horvath. And he's waiting for the referee's whistle. He's blown that. Ashish scores! Yeah. The roar Excellent. from the Sunderland fans over on the far side. And in the 12th minute, Adil Aushish has given Sunderland the lead from the penalty spot. Cardiff City nil, Sunderland won. Excellent by Aushish. Just put your foot through the ball. Right and through that's the what middle. He's done. Yeah. Confident finish from Aushish. His second goal of the season. But more importantly, has given Sunderland a platform here at Cardiff City.
13th minute, they lead by a goal to nil. They'll probably argue all day long about whether it was a penalty or not. It probably was soft, but... They've got themselves to blame. They they, give the if ball you, away, if you they? make contact yeah. and push, yeah. Job arguably quite within his rights to go down. So, 1-0 to Sunderland. The start that Mike Dodds will have been looking for. And we and said about getting that first goal. Yeah, you, you've said it all the time. It's the most important thing for Sunderland these days is to get the first yeah. goal. Don't concede the first goal. Well, that puts the 0-0 out of the equation now. Southampton won Middlesbrough 0. Um, that was Marco and Pride's uh, thoughts sheet. about this game. Now, yes, as you say, it's a clean sheet is uppermost in yeah. Sunderland's minds. Here's Wilson Esbrand inside on the halfway line to Joe Rawls. And Rawls plays it back to Gutas here and across to Unji. Down the line to Bowler. And Bowler now inside to Rawls. Bowler again looking into the centre for Wintle. Forwards to Colwell. Little back heel to Bowler here. Bowler trying to play it through, thread it through down the right side of the penalty area to O'Dowder. Back to Ball Rawls. Rawls inside again to Bowler. <laughs> and he's uh, played it wide left oh. and he's played it straight to the path of Hume. Hume now looking for Job on the shoulder of Gutas. Back to Neil. And Neil down the right again to Job. Inside to Neil. And Neil looking for the run here. Bar. Flag stays down. Pick somebody out. Bar Pick him out. Pick him out. Penalty area. Pick Trying him out, shoot. man. He's won a corner, but you're He's absolutely right. What's he doing? He can't beat the keeper out of the near post. He tried to find the, the, the <laughs> trying to squeeze it in the near post from the angle of the six-yard box. Now, Ashish, Ashish Ashish is looking waiting there just He's to smash roll it. him the ball. Trying to beat the keeper there. You're not going to beat the keeper from there. First corner of the game falls to Sunderland on the left here in their red and white stripes. And even then, Nick, put some power behind your shot. Uh, it, was, it, was, it wasn't the best decision-making in the world. Uh, Aushish will take the corner, swings it in with his right foot to the far post, it bobbles off a couple of heads, oh. and then Hume puts his foot to it, but uh, Horfath gets down and makes the save. Good corner. Yeah, it caused a few problems. Uh, Ballard trying to get on the end of it, came off in the end, Gutas, and then Hume trying to flick it past uh, the keeper with his right foot, the instep, but couldn't really get any power on it. And here's Gutas. 16th minute, Cardiff City nil, Sunderland 1. Ball comes back to Dimitros Gutas, across to Nat Phillips. Plays it on to Wintle. Great ball played over the top, looking for O'Dowder. Uh, it's oh, flicked down into the path of Wintle and O'Neill had to offside. come down offside. and make the challenge, but the flag is up for offside. I'll tell you what, he got him out of trouble there. He did. Well. That was a Blue superb ball over the top. And between them, O'Dowder and Wintle almost conspired to uh, give Sunderland a few problems, but the flag in the end helped them out. Here's Ballard. O'Neill on the right, Neil in the middle, and he swings it. Uh, did that take a deflection? It's come dropped to NG. He was looking for Bar, and NG plays it back to the goalkeeper, at the edge of his six-yard box. Rolled out, kicked out to uh, Gutas onto Rawls. Rawls back to Gutas, across to Phillips, on the edge of the area. Played across the area again to Gutas and down the left wing here. Rawls, pursued by Job, uh, gets it through to oh. O'Dowder, who's got the better of Hume here on the left side with a bit of <coughs> quick feet, trying to cut back inside, leaves it on the left for Rawls, Huddersfield nil, Coventry one as O'Neill clears, and Ellis Sims scoring again for Coventry. He's enjoying a rich vein of form in the second half of the season. Ball comes back to Gutas on halfway. Swings away from Job out to NG on this right hand side who heads it over Barr, but Styles heads it on. Barr just taps it inside to Styles. Sorry, to Aushish. Aushish now inside to Equa, back to Aushish. 
And now Sheesh back to uh, Equa. Equa into Neil in the centre circle, back again to Ballard. And Ballard pauses for a moment and taps it to his left to Dan Neil. Back to Dan Ballard. Luke O'Neill. And he plays a short pass to Equa. Slips it through oh. to an offside rig. He would have been away, it was tight, but I think the assistant, he was well placed, it was probably right. Yeah. But, um, increasingly, as this first half goes on, a sense that Sunderland could just find another breakthrough. It's just changed the dynamics of the game, and it, it getting that first goal. Adil Aushish's penalty after Job was pushed. Here goes Aushish again, and I tell you what, he's been busy in this opening 19 minutes. He's covered a lot of ground, Aushish. The ball's just flicked off him again and cleared by O'Dowda up to the halfway line. Bounces in front of Dan Neal. He's having to battle for this, but he gets it through to Joe. Back to Equa. Now Neal. Uh, he stretches to get the ball back to Ballard, who just steps out of trouble. Carl and Grant was in front of him. Back to Styles here, now through to Neil again. And Neil, even though he's got Colwell on his shoulder all over him, plays it back to Luke O'Neill. Forwards now to Rig, and Rig slips it through the legs of O'Dowda. Down the right wing to Hume, tackled oh, by Wilson Esbrand. It's a throw to Sunderland, who are, are knocking the ball around well here and with a bit of pace. Throw then will be taken by Trey Hume. He's uh, got it to the edge of the penalty area on the right, Joe pushed no free kick Wilson Esbran goes to clear, blocked by Job in the corner it's a goal kick to Cardiff City you hear those buoyant Sunderland yeah. fans Indeed, over in the corner because they there. give him something to sing about Nick. Yep. that's what it is 20th minute Cardiff City nil, Sunderland 1 hopefully we might be able to catch them out again when they're pushing forward well, they're playing out from the back, Cardiff. Phillips bringing this out. Joe behind him, giving chase. Played up to Grant yeah. on the halfway line. He passes it out. Too far ahead of uh, Josh Bowler. And it's a throw to Sunderland on this left-hand side. Callum Styles, who featured, of course, for Hungary in the international break. This week, a 2-0 win over Kosovo. And he in front of Mike Dodds. Puts the ball high in the air onto the head of N G. He finds Colwell but gives it away to Barr. And then Rawls gets a foot to it. Colwell through to Grant. Equa manages to push it into the path of Chris Rigg. Rigg now looking for the run of Joe, but it's going to shoot past him back to the goalkeeper. Who rolls it smartly to Nat Phillips. Nathaniel Phillips, to give him his full name, who began at the Bolton, Bolton Academy, signed for Liverpool in 2019. And here goes Carl and Grant, and O'Neill gets his foot round the ball for a throw to Cardiff down this right wing. 25 yards from the corner on the right as we look down to the pitch in front of us here from the main stand, but the uh, stand opposite is actually taller, the top half of it picked out in red seats rather than the blue of the rest of the bowl of the stadium. There's nobody in there. And G wide on the touchline, tackle by Styles. Is it open that stand at the top? No. It's not, is it? No. But in fairness, as you said before, there are so many empty seats in the lower half. Absolutely pointless. And G into uh, Wintle. Styles makes a challenge and the ball breaks for Neil. Neil now trying to bring this up through the middle. Gets away from Rawls quite neatly up to the halfway line. Lays it off to his left to Aushish. And Aushish to Styles. Styles back to Ballard. Then to O'Neill. Down the right touch line to Hume. Back again to O'Neill into Ballard. Now Styles. Closed down by Bowler. Back to Ballard. Flicks it away from Colwell just in front of him, out to 9 on the right. Finds Job on the halfway line, but uh, Phillips gets his head in front of Job. But the ball comes straight back to Ballard. Forwards now to Aushish, looking for the runner bar down the left of the penalty first area. Time, He's going to make it. 
He's got it onto his right foot, crosses here. Wintle makes a hash of his clearance and Neil with his left oh, foot no. wins a corner as his left foot shot sails just over the angle of bar and post. <laughs> Ellis Sims has scored again for Coventry. They lead at Huddersfield 2-0. But uh, promising again from Sunderland down the left here, the corner, Alshish is going to take almost a quarter of the way through the game with Sunderland leading through Alshish's 12-minute penalty. Good quality ball in again, in again. Well, it caused problems last time. Yeah. Can he cause problems again? Barr is just standing 10 yards down the touchline from him, Wimbledon nil, Harrogate one, Aushish's corner then headed out by Phillips only as far as Neil, crashes a shot in, comes down then for Rig Neil again, trying to place it in the top corner just over Unlucky They are causing Cardiff City problems Set pieces are being much more promising pieces, aren't they, they yeah. Neil a couple of inches lower and that have nestled in the top corner but uh, did well Tried to pick his spot, swung it, and it was inches over. Here is Phillips again. They're playing out from the back again, Cardiff. 24th minute, Cardiff City nil, Sunderland 1. Headed down by O'Dowder to Wilson Esbrand. Back inside to Rawls, out wide again to Wilson Esbrand, who began his football journey with West Ham United I'm sure you, you'll know Pierre Equa well and uh, Aji Elise here's Unji Preston 1 Rotherham 0 back to Phillips looking for the run down the right of Colwell who slightly hesitated and then that, in that split second the ball has run away from him and behind for a goal kick Ballard was there to make absolutely sure that Colwell didn't get on the end of it Patterson then all in yellow, away to our right. Rolls the ball to Ballard. The referees said, get on with it. Ballard plays it back to Patterson. Patterson passes it back to Ballard. And uh, out to Aushish, who's got Phillips on his shoulder. Phillips is fouled by Aushish. He's done well there, Aushish, to bring down the six foot three Nat Phillips. <laughs> And this free kick just inside the Sunderland half on the right-hand side. A couple of yards in from touch. Play back to Phillips, across to Gutas. And Gutas signed from uh, Zivaspor in the summer in Greece. Puts the ball out, throw to Sunderland. Who lead 1-0 in uh, brightening skies. There's a bit more blue away to our left, a little less black. Headed on by Equa. Aushish trying to find Job. He stumbles slightly, but gets it through goal, to Rig. Goal, goal for goal. Rig now. Rig. He's in the penalty area. Left foot oh. saved by the feet of the keeper. Came back to Rig. Couldn't get his head on it. And Gutas heads it away. Rig unlucky there, but a good save by Horfax. And again, maybe could he have rolled it across? Possibly. But again, another good opportunity. opportunity. Still 1 0. But uh, that's a couple of times they've got in behind. Cardiff could have doubled the lead but they've looked um, I don't want to tempt fate but they've looked fairly comfortable since the goal they Cardiff haven't really got in behind Sunderland yeah throw for Cardiff on the left drops throw nine finds Equa Equa now to Alshish again he's seen so much of the ball he's been fouled now by Rawls Errol Butler, Bullet, sorry, Errol Bullet, complaining again to the fourth official. Hume will take the free kick. It was a combination actually of Rawls and Wilson Esbrand that fouled Aushish. O'Neill left to take the free kick, taps it to Hume wide on the right. Swings it in to the penalty. Oh, Aushish comes out. through to him on the right, trying to pick out. Oh, yes. yes! Job! 2 0. Excellent. Almost on the goal line. Job in the 27th minute. Quick free kick. And again, Ashish involved again. Yes. Fantastic. 
great delivery and good finish by Job on the line to put it in. Right in, down the throat of the Cardiff defence. Alshish did well to get on the ball, which came into the penalty area down the right-hand side and play it across to Job just to smash it in on the goal line. It uh, wasn't the easiest ball for Alshish to dig out and bring in, good but finish, a great Frank. finish, yeah. Job, good finish. So that's a great position to be in for Sunderland in the 28th minute, 2-0 up. Peter Brunel, Carlisle won. Carlisle, who've not won at Peterborough since 2000. So lots of potential upsets, if you like, this afternoon. Would he class this as an upset? Not really, no, no. I'm just trying to over oh, I'm just trying to no. dramatise it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to big it up. <laughs> but no, it's been an excellent start by Sunderland. They've got to keep it going. Yeah, 2 0 up. And uh, I mentioned all those statistics at the beginning. I wonder if there's something in it. Here's Phillips bringing the ball out. Plays it along the floor, through the middle, straight to an offside. Grant, but the referee says play on. Rig trying to dig it out. Loose ball, Equa gets his foot on the end of it. Headed away by Unji. Equa nods it down. Job looking to get on the end of this, he gets his foot to it. Equa makes a block on Unji's ball forwards and it goes out for a throw to Cardiff on the right-hand side. You've got to say, Cardiff at times look all over the place, don't they? I, I, Defensively. Yeah, they do, and I, I, I haven't seen a great deal in Cardiff in this first half that suggests they're playing with that organisation that Mike Dodd said, you know, watching them over the last few weeks, they've, they've had. They don't seem to be gelling at all, really. Here's Colwell, tackled by Equa, Rig in the middle of the Cardiff half, out to Barr on the left-hand side. Barr towards the corner of the penalty area, just flicks it through to Equa, almost on the goal line, pulls it back, maybe a little deep, over the head of Dan Neal, it'll drop for Hume on the corner on the right. He puts it back in, headed away, and uh, behind for a corner by Gutas. Yeah, kind of what Sunderland have been able to do, is pick their passes out, get the ball out wide. Another set piece, and it'd be interesting if they can uh, cause as many problems as they've done with the first two corners. With this, they lead 2 0 Sunderland. We're in the 30th minute, half an hour almost played. Well, 30 minutes played now. Barr is going to take this corner from the right. A lot of players on the six yard line. Now, Sheesh is now going to take over the corner taking on the right hand side. Plays it short to Barr. Barr plays it back here to Neil in midfield. He plays it wide to Aushish. Aushish puts it in with his left foot. Ooh. It's headed away by Phillips. Nodded back down into the penalty area by Aushish. Barr in the corner almost is trying to come in past O'Dowda. With his left, now his right, crosses. The keeper takes it. Hesitantly, I say, because he dropped it once, then caught it. Now rolls it out. And it's won by Neil in front of Wilson Esbrand. Neil trying to get in the penalty area on the right-hand side, just run away from him slightly. Oh, Dowder's under pressure, Neil puts it behind for a goal kick. Well, they're turning the screw a bit on Cardiff when yep. Cardiff are in possession. Good pressing. Causing the mistakes. Job, who won the penalty, Job, who scored the second goal. Here he is now trying to intercept, it's played to uh, Wintle into the middle to Rawls, Rawls back here on the right to Phillips, Phillips plays it back to the goalkeeper, out to Gutas, Gutas now down the left touchline to Wilson Esbrand who plays it back to Gutas, Job goes to close him down, pressing again on the goalkeeper now who passes it out to Phillips and Phillips out to Wintle on the right side, down the line to Bowler, back to Wintle, Ryan Wintle, he's on it on the right side of midfield and now Sheesh is preventing him playing it forwards, back to Phillips, back to the goalkeeper, Gateshead 1, Rochdale nil. They look nervous, Cardiff. They do, don't they? Yeah. Wide on the left, O'Dowda, and back to Gutas, back again 
to the goalkeeper. The prospect for Cardiff of, of conceding a third before half time. I think that's probably one of the reasons they're a bit nervy. Here's Wilson Esbrand. <coughs> still in the Cardiff half. Rawls. And he's trying to get forwards but can't. Gives it inside to Colwell. Right, they can't Back get to out. Gutas. They can't get out. Phillips. He's got a bar in front of him. Trying to bring this up into the centre circle. Equa in front of him. So squares it to Rawls on the left, looking for O'Dowder's break down the left, O'Nion gets in front of him, Hume is there as well, gets the ball, Hume, great tackle, back to O'Nion, looking for Job's run, Gutas just uh, keeps the ball in on the far side and plays it behind him to the goalkeeper, who just stopped it going out behind for a corner, and Horvath then plays it to Phillips. It's also the press prospect of you press like Sunderland will do you they'll make mistakes yeah and G back to Horvath plays it out corner of the penalty area on the left the home record this season 1-9 drawn three lost seven Cardiff so oh, what, what do you read into that not a lot Phillips bringing this up again Job on his shoulder Phillips to bowler bowler just trying to get round Styles has to cut into the middle, leaves it for Rawls. Rawls short pass through here now to Colwell. Colwell out to Wilson Esbrand. Halfway inside the Sunderland half. All in blue. Crosses. Patterson watches this bounce out of the penalty area on the far side don't on foul, this don't right. Foul, don't and G's foul. holding off Bar. Bar blocks and then just taps it back inside to Styles to bring out who uh, manages well, he's pulled down by Unji, who just grabs his shirt in frustration and pulls him to the floor. The furthest they've come up field in some 15, 20 minutes, I think, Cardiff. Cardiff nil, Sunderland two in the 35th minute. O'Neill back to Patterson, to Ballard. Ballard in the D, the edge of his area, to O'Neill. O'Neill now wide on the right, leaves it for Hume. Hume back to Patterson, passing it to Ballard. The edge of the area, through the middle now. Equa, Equa head down, looking around, up into the Cardiff half, still going, and then plays it out to the left wing to Barr. Barr now to come past on G, swings much, it into the penalty much, area, a little too bit much. too much in front of Job. And it swings behind him and out for a goal kick. But they carried the ball all the way from one penalty area to the other then. Sunderland. If you remember last year when we were here, they made substitutions after well, 20 minutes. Well, it was all going horribly wrong, wasn't it, for Cardiff last season. Here now is Gutas. Plays it left wide to Wilson Esbrand. Straight through the middle to Carlin Grant. Oh. Uh, he's brought down by Ballard, scythed him down. Just stuck his right leg right out and uh, down went Carlin Grant in front of Jeremy Simpson. And the uh, well, play's gone on now. The free kick's not been taken anywhere near where it, the offence happened. And bowler's pulled down by Styles. A yellow card for Callum Styles. First yellow card of the game. We're in the 36th minute. Referee just ushering Abdullah Bar back a few yards. Rawls and uh, Wintle over the free kick again, and Jesus and a saunter past the pair of them. The referee applies the spray in front of Aushish Bar and Unji. Rawls and Wintle have a conversation and the wall is 18 or the line is 18 yards out rules curls it in towards the far post and it's caught from Phillips header yeah. by Patterson straight at him in fairness yeah, comfortable save but again that's the threat they've got so still Cardiff nil Sunderland 2 we're live on BBC Radio Newcastle A reminder and we're back tomorrow morning 11.30 with build up to the 12.30 kickoff Newcastle against West Ham with Ray Zernando and uh, Benno and I are back on Monday afternoon from the Stadium of Light, 2 o'clock for 3 o'clock kickoff against Blackburn as Job 
trying to stride down the right side of the Cardiff penalty area. Pulls it back now to Dan Neal. Back again to Luke O'Neill. O'Neill forwards down the right to Aushish. Back to Neal on halfway. Wide on the right still. Leaves it for Aushish. Taps it back to O'Neill. And O'Neill back to Ballard. Inside to Styles. Styles up to the halfway line to Rig. Back to Styles. Back again to Ballard. Ballard across on the right to O'Neill. O'Neill through to Job. Hefty challenge from behind him on Gutas, but he just picks himself up. Job. Equa has it now through the middle. Slips it through to Job. Job towards the edge of the area is going to shoot with his left foot, but straight at four. Off half. Good play again by Sunderland. Yep. Oh, they're moving the ball well. Good movement. Good intention by Job up front. 2 0 to Sunderland as Phillips brings the ball out. 39th minute. The, I haven't seen any statistics, but I think the game's been largely played in the Cardiff half this first 45 minutes. Here's O'Dowder back to Wilson Esbrand. Back again to Gutas. Across the midfield to Phillips, who brings this up to the halfway line, then short pass forwards to Wintle. <clears throat> out to NG, who's tackled by Barr. NG comes back to recover the ball in his own half and slips it inside to Wintle, who gets it forward here to Bowler. Bowler back to NG on the touchline on the right, up through to Grant on halfway, leaves it for Bowler, but oh. O'Neill got a foot on it, but oh, she just couldn't quite get on the end of it. Rawls now out towards Wilson Espran, but Hume intercepts. The ball comes back now for Bowler, wide, Wintle on the right-hand side, halfway inside the Sunderland half. Crossing now, looking for O'Dowda, comes down off the back of Hume, the Good header from O'Dowda to Patterson. <coughs> Rolls it out to Neil. Then on to Ashish. Back to Neil. Equa. Back to O'Neill, then to Ballard at the edge of the Sunderland penalty area. To his right on the corner of the box, O'Neill. Up to Aushish again, slips it to Equa. Equa up towards halfway, looks for Rig, finds Job. Job now wide to Barr on the left wing, running at G, then checking, playing it back behind him is Styles. Styles to Neil, just inside, forwards to Job. Job to Equa looking for Styles, then comes back to Job at the edge of the area, gets it out to Barr wide on the left, and Barr plays it back to Equa on this left wing, and Equa back to the halfway line and Dan Ballard. And Ballard rolls it to his right to Luke O'Neill. And O'Neill as they look for another avenue to try and get in behind Cardiff. Wilson Esbrand blocks it, Rig puts it out. Throw to Cardiff into the final. Five minutes of the first half, Preston 2, Rotherham 0. I'm told that in terms of possession so far, it's 64 to 36 percent in favour of uh, Cardiff, but then just doing but nothing with it. No, no. Yeah, kept it in their own half. They're all in their own half. Uh, no, I'm told now, actually, it's in favour of Sunderland, it's been uh, corrected. So 64 36 in favour of Sunderland. That makes more sense to me because Sunderland have kept. Cardiff pinned back in the Cardiff City half. Here now is uh, Wilson Esbrand on the far side into Colwell in the centre circle. Dijon Brown, incidentally, the score of that Gateshead oh, goal free again. Kick. A free kick for a foul on NG by Aushish. Silly free kick. Wide on the uh, right. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Swansea City 0. So halfway inside the Sunderland half, on the right-hand side here, Wintle and Rawls again over the free kick for Cardiff City, who are trailing 2-0. And Sunderland holding their line up just outside the penalty area. Yeah, keep them up. Rawls swings the ball in again with his left foot, Ballard gets above Phillips. Neil's gone down, clutching his head. Immediately, the referee, Jeremy Simpson, 
indicating it's a head injury and calling the uh, the medics on. And uh, Neil Equa just pushing his arms back behind his head as he lies flat on the floor and getting treatments. Uh, a clutch of concerned Sunderland players around him for a moment, but I think now they probably realise he's OK and they move away. Job strolls down here to the touchline for some refreshment. Dan Neal still receiving treatment just inside the Sunderland penalty area. But, you know, to reflect on the 43 minutes so far, Sunderland uh, have been comfortable, haven't they, in cruise Very control? In fact, um, you've got to look at Cardiff and the first five minutes, yeah, they, they looked OK, but after that, they've fallen away, they've made mistakes, they've been punished, and who knows, we could have been not just two up, we could have been three up. Yes, they could have been... You hope that... that uh, it's Preston three, Rotherham nil. Uh, you hope that in the second half they just maintain that composure they've got, they don't do anything silly. They put surprised. themselves in the box seat, haven't they? I wouldn't be surprised if they make changes at half-time, Nick. Do you think you can see the likes of uh, Dak and... Roberts and he no, knows no Ca you think Cardiff, Cardiff will Cardiff make, make you know to get back into this game yeah you've got to say when we've got when we're on the ball we're causing them problems you no know, good movement Aaron Ramsey's back uh, fit for Cardiff these last couple of weeks he hasn't played much this season but um, you could probably see him coming on at some point Dan Neal incidentally is still lying on his back getting treatment Patterson over him yeah, he's been excellent, Dan Neal, in the middle of the park. Yeah, he has. You know, getting on he's the ball, up now, actually. Things, making things happen. Well, he's, at least he's you know, you look sitting. At the you look at the Cardiff players and they're, they're having discussion after discussion, aren't they? You know, who's picking up who, where we're going. Yeah, you're right. I'm watching. You know, they look at them all. Look, Each of them know, both indicating waving here and pointing because, there, and yeah, because yeah. you know he's. At times, it's so easy for Sunderland just to, to play through him. Uh, Daniel's clutching a yeah, he's gonna get pad stitches. to his forehead. We're in the last minute of the 45. I suspect he will stay in the dressing room. They'll play out the first half with 10 men, Sunderland. Dan Neal walking quite purposely, though, but heading to the tunnel with his bandage on his head. Uh, the referee waiting for him to come off the pitch. We're going to get five minutes of added time now. And they're all bullets, not particularly happy about that. Again, is protesting to the fourth official. Dan's replacing, he's pulling his shirt off. There's going to be a drop ball to Anthony Patterson's feet. Uh, and Jeremy Simpson, they're not popular here this afternoon, having given away that, given that penalty in the... 12th minute now a couple of other decisions and that the Cardiff fans not happy with Dan Neal getting a new shirt down here on the touchline it looks like he is going to come back on them for these yeah. final few minutes as Hume intercepts again on the far side strong challenge that gets the ball back into the Cardiff half and now Dan Neal is wearing oh, a numberless shirt here's Oshish Oshish Flicks it away to his right-hand side to Rig. Rig halfway inside the Cardiff half. Back it comes to Hume. Dan Neal back on now. The man with no number. And here's Ballard playing it to Luco Nyan to his right, just behind him. And now forwards down the right wing to Aushish again, who's had uh, a very, very good first no, 45 no, minutes. But he's no. given the ball away, just as I say that, to Bowler. And now Bowler on the break down this right-hand side, trying to come round Styles, who makes a challenge, slips it inside to Dan Neal, and Neal falls to Job on halfway on the left, to Barr behind him, back to Styles, and uh, now to <coughs> Ballard. Ballard in the middle of his own half, to Luco Nyan, just to his right. Played now nearly two minutes of the minimum five added to the end of this first 45. If you're just joining us on BBC Radio Newcastle, Sunderland leading 2-0. The ball out to Hume on the right, on the touchline, on halfway. 
comes back into his own half, then cuts across, plays it back to Ballard behind him, to Styles to his left. Styles taps it to Neil. Neil holds off oh. Wintle. Wintle fouls him. Free kick to Sunderland. And looking round the stadium, so many Cardiff fans have headed to the concourses for half time. There are hundreds of empty seats around the stadium. They could be booed off, please. Cardiff. They've been poor. And they have been poor. But credit to Sunderland. They yes. made them look poor. Yeah, they pressed pressed well. Patterson then to take this free kick. Drives this down the right, halfway inside the Cardiff half. Headed into the middle by Rawls. Wintle trying to find Bowler. Drops over his shoulder, but it's going to run for Styles, And he whipped it forward with his left foot up to Ashish at the corner of the Cardiff penalty area where Wintle knocks it off him. Inside to Phillips, out then to Rawls, and Rawls plays it across to Wilson Espan, who mistake. slips. Another mistake, but good and pressure. the ball goes out for a throw. Good pressure. You know that. You know, Sunderland asking questions. How good are you when you're being put under pressure? Down comes Hume to take the throw for Sunderland. 20 yards from the corner on the right. Finds Job, Wilson Esbrand right behind him. Hume again. Now to Rig, who's oh, offside. Okay. Flag up. Free kick to Cardiff. So they'll take in the penalty area on the left. Gutas back to the goalkeeper. They've played uh, four minutes about of the five. Out to the right to G. Back to Phillips. Phillips now to his left. Gutas as they creep up to the halfway line. Colwell, Colwell's come a long way back to get this, leaves it for Phillips, now to Gutas. And Gutas, short pass forwards to Ruben Colwell again, leaves it for O'Dowda, back to Gutas. Yeah, not going anywhere. No, not it's just sideways just and forwards about a couple of yards and back it goes. Halfway line. <coughs> Bowler trying to get it through to Wintle, hooked away by Equa. Out over the head of Errol Bullet, and it's a throw to Cardiff on the right with seconds really remaining of the five. And the ball back with Ethan Horvath plays out then to Rawls, forwards to Wilson oh, Esbrand, who's tackled by Equa, <coughs> through to Aushish. Aushish now looking for Barr, Barr trying to let it run from for Dan Neal, he's slipped. And there goes the half-time whistle. There's and the you're right. That's right. Cardiff players booed. It's not been at all impressive from them, but you've got to <coughs> hand it to Sunderland for the way they've gone about the first half. Yeah, they've gone about it in the right manner, Nick. And, and I think that's, shall we say, like the old Sunderland, the way we're playing. You know, the way we're moving the ball, good movement off the ball, you know, putting pressure. And, we, and again... It's not what we've seen in a few games where we're pressing high up. You know, usually we drop off and let them have it, but we're pressing high up and we making them make mistakes. Two goals, then the penalty. Job, <coughs> like, like he got a touch in the back, went down. But the argument is, if you're pushed, it's you push? it's contact. He went down. Adil Ashish, confident penalty, smashed down the middle, and then Job in the 27th minute. The free kick on the right-hand side from Hume to Aushish in the right of the penalty area. He managed to pull it right back across the face of goal and Job just smashed it in at close range. Cardiff have offered very little one header from Phillips straight at Patterson, but they've been penned back. They've been, they've been penned back and pushed you know, back in their you, own half. You look, you look at maybe key players for me and one of them is Aushish because he's playing in that sort of 10 role and he's making himself available and he has been causing them a problem. So, an impressive 45 minutes from Sunderland. They've got to keep it going in the second half. They've got a platform. They want to keep a clean sheet. They can put the game to bed with a third goal, one suspects. Well, you know what we say, don't you, Nick? The next, next goal, goal, especially the third goal, is crucial. And on the bench, they've got the likes of Roberts and Dak. Uh, at least say, you know, a little bit more now on the, the bench than they've had in previous weeks. So, fingers crossed they can... Uh, keep this going this afternoon and their impressive record 
on Good Fridays. Good Fridays. And it's a good Friday so far. So far, and yeah, you, you're looking at, um, you know, Job up front. He's had that rest, and it looks as though he's had a good rest as well because his retention off the ball is good. Good finish. He still had a lot to do, you know, and again, you know, he's, he's playing in that role and he's helping out, you know, bringing players in. And again, Dan Neal, excellent in the middle, middle of the park. Will it remain a good Friday? The second half to come on BBC Radio Newcastle and SAFC.com. At the break, it is Cardiff City nil, Sunderland 2. Matt Bailey at breakfast. Could it be the end for sausage dogs? <coughs> Dachshunds are facing a breeding ban in Germany, which is obviously where they come from. They just love a sausage in Germany, don't they? Everything is sausage-shaped in Germany. They've got sausage dogs. They've got cars shaped like sausages. If you go over there, they're all just using sausage-shaped phones. <laughs> I went to a sausage museum when I was in Germany. People always ask me whether it was any good, and I always have to say, it was the absolute worst. <laughs> And there's more of that terrible crack on Tuesday. I'll see you then. Matt Bailey at breakfast. Weekdays from six. BBC Radio Newcastle. Total Sport. North East. BBC Radio Newcastle. It's all going rather well then at halftime. Sunderland lead 2 0 at Cardiff City. Adi Oshish from the penalty spot. Job Bellingham, 15 minutes later, will be back with Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett for full commentary of the second half very shortly. Let's go through all the other championship games then. At this afternoon, two that have already finished. Bristol City beat Leicester by a goal to nil. Anis Mehmeti with 15 minutes to go. Uh, so Leicester could end up third by the end of this afternoon. Millwall won West Bromwich Albion won as a full time score as well. Duncan Watmore gave Millwall the lead halfway through the first half. John Swift equal for West Brom halfway through the second half in the three o'clock games then Coventry 2-0 up at Huddersfield Ellis Sims formerly of Sunderland of course uh, scoring both of those goals in the space of six minutes Hull against Stoke City is goalless but Plymouth are 1-0 up at Norwich thanks to Morgan Whitaker. Preston are now 3-0 up on Rotherham Dwayne Holmes uh, after 22 minutes and then Emil Jakobsen scored twice in the last eight minutes of that first half so Preston 3 Rotherham 0 no goals between Queen's Park Rangers and Birmingham but Sheffield Wednesday leads Swansea City 1-0 Bailey Cadam Artery son of Danny, former Everton striker, uh, has given Sheffield Wednesday the lead there. Middlesbrough a 1-0 down on the south coast at Southampton. Adam Armstrong, former Newcastle striker, scoring that goal. Two games later on today in the Championship as well. Blackburn against Ipswich kicks off at half past five. And Watford against Leeds kicks off at eight o'clock. Total Sport. North East. BBC Radio Newcastle. Into League One then, Cambridge United lead 1-0 away at Barnsley. It was an own goal that gave them that advantage. Derby 1-0 up on Blackpool. Ibu Adams five minutes before half-time. Exeter 1, Charlton Athletic 0. Ben Purrington early on with that goal. Liam Sarkham has given Cheltenham a 1-0 lead at Fleetwood. Lincoln City and Leighton Orient are goalless. Carlisle United are 1-0 up at Peterborough. John Mellish, formerly of Gateshead, giving Carlisle their goal. Port Vale 1, Bristol Rovers 0. Ben Garrity just before half-time. No goals in the next three games. Reading against Northampton. Shrewsbury against Ox. United and Stevenage against Bolton an own goal though in the 43rd minute has given Wigan a 1-0 lead at home to Burton Albion at half time and Portsmouth are 2-1 up at Wickham, Colby Bishop after 3 minutes for Portsmouth, Matt Butcher equalised just 4 minutes later but Colby Bishop got his second after half an hour so Wickham 1, Portsmouth 2 Total Sport North East On the station with Newcastle and Sunderland commentary exclusively live BBC Radio Newcastle And only one team has scored more than one goal in the whole of League 2 so it's Accrington Stanley nil, Morecambe nil, but Harrogate lead 1-0 at AFC Wimbledon thanks to Matty Daly Barrow are that team that have scored twice and Cole Stockton's got both of them they're 2-0 up on Grimsby Bradford City nil, Tranmere Rovers nil, Newport County lead 1-0 at Colchester or Francis Antzala just before half time Crawley nil, Doncaster Rovers nil, Stockport I take it back are 2-0 up at Forest Green Rovers Callum Camps and then Rico Richards has got their second Gillingham 0 Crew Alexandra 0 MK Dons 1-0 up on Walsall Emery Teskel Sutton United lead at Salford City a really late first half goal from Oliver Sanderson Swindon 1 Notts County 0 Aaron Drinnan after 20 minutes and well, Paul guys, what do you think about that then? Up on Mansfield Total Sport North East The Newcastle and Sunderland AFC podcast <coughs> On BBC Sounds BBC Radio and Newcastle uh, Which takes Stockport back to the top of the table Because Manfield are losing and Stockport are winning Into um, the league then Good smart. first halves for both Gateshead and Blythe Spartans Gateshead in the National is, League 
One nil up at home to Rochdale. Dejon Brown with his ninth goal in seven games have given them a lead at the break. And in National League North Blythe Spartans, what a result this would be for them as well. One nil up on Curzon Ashton at half time. JJ Hooper Taylor, with why do you their think goal. But our Eddie featured Howe. game is at the first what, Cloud Arena. Sixth against eighth in National Eddie League North at the start of play. Eddie South Shields against Spennymoor. Our non league reporter Paul Dixon can tell us how the first half is. What do you mean, bring the manager? Well, it's South Shields nil, SGL Spennymoor nil, but I don't know how that hasn't been gone. An absolute massive crowd here, Colin. The most I've seen for a long time. But. It was Shields who went nearly ahead on five minutes. Mackenzie Healy cutting in from the right. Left foot shot just going over the bar. Good effort. And then <coughs> Martin's had a chance. Paul Black had setting them up. And Martin firing past the post. Spenny Moore in the half hour went close when a bigger a header from a corner was cleared up the line by Blair Adams. And then on 36 minutes, well, Shields should have went ahead. Top goal scorer Paul Black had brilliantly set up by Aaron Martin's eight yards out. And he fired past the post. The crowd were aghast that he had missed as he scored three in the last three games. And then Blackett again. A brilliant ball into the near post by Mackenzie Healy. Blackett flicked at it, hit the underside of the crossbar and was cleared. And more or less the last kick of the game, Glenn Taylor, captain for Spennymoor, in on goal. A low shot, but there was Miles Borney to tip the ball round the post. No goals, Colin. There's plenty of chances. And I think there could be goals in the second half. Nils each half time. Paul, thank you very much indeed. Lots of non league football across the weekend. Not that much today, actually, apart from those three games that we've just talked about. Six games in the Northern League across divisions one and two today at various different kickoff times as well. So we will run through what has happened or what will have happened in our local football roundup at 5 45. Feel barriers breaking, earth shaking, sometimes nerve quaking, always intoxicating, accelerating. Boundary breaking, totally captivating. Every tackle, breathtaking. Every try from every nation, reverberating. Feel every moment of the Six Nations. The Women's Six Nations, this weekend. Watch on BBC iPlayer. Sunderland 2-0 up at Cardiff City at half time. Back with Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett in just under five minutes time for at full commentary of the second half. They play Friday and Monday across Easter weekend. Well, Newcastle United play well, Saturday and Story Tuesday. Does the Tuesday contract. count as Easter weekend? Contract I don't know, but they play Saturday and Tuesday anyway. And tomorrow they are at home to West Ham United. Eddie Howe was speaking to the media this morning and uh, one of the things he was talking about was saying that he doesn't want to see Sandra Tonali's ban from playing football extended even if he is found guilty of new betting offences. The Newcastle midfielder is halfway through his 10-month ban for breaching gambling rules whilst he was playing in Italy before he signed for Newcastle. But yesterday he was charged with misconduct by the English FA for allegedly placing 50 bets after joining the Magpies last summer. Sandra has an illness. I think if this was associated with another form of illness, I think there'd be a lot more sympathy and understanding. So, as I said, that, didn't, that illness didn't stop the minute he moved to England, that, that illness was still there. And it was only when everything that had happened and instantly he was very apologetic and very um, sorry for what he had done that he, he needed help. And we've tried, along with Sandro's representatives, along with his family, to get him the help that he needs to recover from this. You can't quantify how much we've missed him this year. In, in difficult moments, we've had a player that's training every day. We haven't been able to put a midfield together and, and he's there and we can't use him. And that, that's been yeah frustrating beyond belief, really, for us because we know the qualities that he has and he's been the player we've needed at certain state, well, a lot of times this year. So if that ban was extended, we would still be feeling that pain and so would Sandro because he wants to play football. You know, he's in a good place. He's doing well off the pitch. I think he should be allowed the chance now to, uh, to move forward with his career. Uh, so that was Eddie Howe on Sandra Tonali. Meanwhile, in terms of uh, injuries and injured players, Eddie Howe says Sven Botman has had a successful operation on his knee, but the Dutch defender will be out of action for several months with what is a second injury to his ACL this season. Quite a complex story around Sven this, this season it. since Thanks he got his knee injury. Initially at a, a partial tear Let's see if we can ACL. get it over we the 50, 50, obviously 50, um, saw a specialist opinion on that injury uh, and there were sort of conflicting bank. reports coming back on what he should do next. Ultimately, our medical team advised him to get surgery. He himself wanted to, to carry on playing and I think that we're always the... Um, always try and guide and help the players 
but ultimately it's their bodies and they have to make the final decision. So um, unfortunately, succumb to the injury eventually. But I've seen several players from that injury come back and carry on playing and, and stay fit. So it's a delicate issue for him. And he now has a long period of rehab ahead of him and um, we wish him well and we hope he comes back in a, a really good place. Mehdi Howe also saying that Newcastle are seeking specialist advice on a back injury that was picked up by Lewis Miley while on international duty with England's under-20s. We'll bring you commentary of Newcastle against West Ham from 12.30 tomorrow. Matthew Raisbeck and John Anderson, as always, and their build-up will begin at half-past 11. Uh, from football to rugby then, because tonight Newcastle Falcons are at home to Leicester Tigers at 7.45 at Kingston Park. Still looking, of course, for that first Premiership win of the season. But consultant director of rugby Steve Diamond told our commentator Dean Gray that Leicester are a tough proposition. Well, they've got some world-class players, certainly the half-backs, so they've got two wonderful kickers, so I think the ball will be in the air quite a lot, certainly the, if the weather is inclement, to say the least. They have a mixed game at the moment. They tried to move it wide last week, which I don't think they'll do against us, and Gloucester manhandled them. So I think they'll stick to the kicking game, get us in the corners and drive that mall over. I think that'll be their, um, their plan. There's a lot in the press recently about the Saudi Sovereign Fund being interested in, in, in buying into a rugby club. I know it's not just Newcastle Falcons are looking at, they're looking at Northampton, I think, and, and Gloucester, and maybe it's one or two others as well. They would be ideally suited here owning the football club. Uh, is there any, any update on that? Any news up on that? On that yeah, uh, somebody that uh, whisper? tell me, no, what does uh, Styles bring to the team? I think there is, a, I mean, in the background, they're going to attempt to put a joint venture together to... It? Express He's rugby, certainly in Saudi Arabia, and I think they've chosen think, Newcastle uh, to be the experts to, to him, help develop so. an academy of some description over there and, and build the relationship so. not, from not, there not. on in. Yeah, so that is Steve Diamond there, the consultant director of rugby Hi, at Newcastle Julian. Falcons. How but live commentary been tonight been on the BBC Sport website yeah, and been, at the Dean Gray and Ian Stafford from that game against London, uh, Leicester Tigers sorry, uh, at around about half past seven. Kickoff is at 7.45. In the basketball last night, the Newcastle Eagles men were beaten by 90 points to 84 at home to Caledonia Gladiators. That's despite having a three-point lead going into the final quarter as well. Durham Cricket have made a signing today. A young man with a famous surname, Hayden Mustard, the 17-year-old wicketkeeper batter, is the son of Durham legend Phil and he he has signed a two-year deal. Uh, he's come through the academy. He was in Zimbabwe with them uh, earlier on in the month. He was also part of the England Under-19 World Cup squad last month as well. And a bit of rugby league to finish briefly. Uh, last night in the Super League, Castleford were beaten 26-6 at home by Leeds Rhinos. Today, Hull KR won the Hull Derby 34-10. And St Helens are 2-0 up on Wigan. The second half has just started. In League One, incidentally, Newcastle Thunder are at home to Workington tomorrow afternoon. But we are going back to the Cardiff City Stadium with Sunderland 2-0 up at the break at Cardiff City. Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett here in just a tick. Half time highlights. Total Sport. North East. BBC Radio Newcastle. Out to Rawls onto his left and uh, oh, Gutas always giving the ball away to Alshish. Job could be in, in the, the penalty target. area here. Trying to go, oh, he's oh. gone down and a penalty's been given. Alshish against Ethan Horvath and he's waiting for the referee's whistle. He's blown that. Oh, she scores! The roar Excellent. from the Sunderland fans over on the far side. And in the 12th minute, Adil Oshish has given Sunderland the lead from the penalty spot. Cardiff City nil, Sunderland 1. O'Neill left to take the free kick. Taps it to Hume, wide on the right. Swings it in to the penalty. Oh, oh, Sheesh comes through to him on the right. Trying to pick out, oh, yes! yes! Job! 2-0! Excellent. Almost on the goal line. Job in the 27th minute. Total Sport. North East. Nick Barnes and Gary Bennett, MBE. BBC Radio Newcastle. Two changes for Cardiff. No surprise there. Uh, Wilson Esbrand, Ruben Colwell are replaced by Aaron Ramsey and Famara Didu, who's on loan from Granada, the Senegalese international striker who uh, is tall and looks as though he's pretty athletic so he's in for the second half and already gets his head on the ball six foot four Deed who played at Bristol City for four years between oh, 2017 and 2021 putting himself about he is uh, already yeah him. as uh, O'Dowda tries to get the ball down the left wing here Cardiff all in blue attacking from right to left in the second half and already starting with a little bit more intent than they've showed in the whole of the first 
45 minutes this afternoon. In front of us, incidentally, it's a throw to Cardiff on the left-hand side. Um, when we get a moment, I'll explain who is sitting in, in front of us. Uh, the ball here at a stop because referee Jeremy Simpson has awarded Sunderland a free kick on the right-hand side over in the corner. Dave Elliott, who played for Newcastle United in the, Newcastle United in the Fairs Cup final five years at Sunderland, is sitting just in front of us. Is he? Yep. <coughs> and uh, had a brief chat with him. Played for Newcastle. Uh, half time. Played for both. Newcastle and Sunderland. Yep. A, uh, one of the players, he says, in the uh, Fairs Cup and then moved to Sunderland for five seasons. Here's Job, pushes the ball back behind him to Hume and uh, Gutas is all over Job and concedes well the free kick. 2-0 then still in the opening stages of the second half to Sunderland. O'Neill here on the right on the halfway line, plays the ball back to Ballard. Ballard in the middle, he's got Styles just to his left-hand side. So the Cardiff City team now is Horvath, Unji, Phillips, Gutas and Ramsey has come on, but O'Dowd has dropped to left-back and here he is on the ball and uh, just takes it down in front of Chris Rigg and plays it behind him to Nat Phillips, who plays it to the keeper with Job closing in. And Ramsey has pushed up into midfield where it's Wintle and Rawls, Bowler and Grant, and then up front now it's Famara Didhu as Aushish is fouled here by Grant on the right wing, halfway inside the Cardiff City half. Sunderland in there, red and white stripes, black shorts and red socks this afternoon. And uh, Aushish has been delivered a message, I think, at the start of the second half by Cardiff, yeah, who but... clearly have had a message delivered to them by the manager. Stop him. Yep. So, Hume over the ball, just a couple of yards in from touch, taps it to Aushish, who plays it back to Hume. Hume down the right-winged rig, who is being pulled back by O'Dowd, but play goes on. Now, here's Didhu, but uh, Hume just whips back, gets the ball off him, plays it back to Anthony Patterson. Here to O'Neill. O'Neill plays it across the penalty area to Dan Ballard. And Ballard... Plays it out now, out to the left wing, looking for Barr, who has closed down quite quickly. Peterborough nil, Carlisle United two, as Job picks up a ball on the left wing. Phillips in front of him, Job oh, well going, trying to go past him. Phillips is struggling to keep Job away. Job just comes back out with the ball, plays it behind him to Styles. Styles down the line again to Barr. Barr back here to... Styles and Styles back to Dan Ballard. He plays it across to Luke O'Neill. O'Neill quickly gets the ball away from the feet of Grant, who tried to tackle him, and the ball is played across Great pass. by Hume to Barr on the left wing. Three in the box. Barr taking on and G. A couple of step overs. It comes back to Dan Neil. Neil told to shoot. Oh, Just over the bar. It took a slight deflection. It's a corner for Sunderland. Their fourth corner of the match, their first of the second half. Now Sheesh, who's caused problems with the previous three, coming down with Barr to take this. we we'll take a quick one then. On the right-hand side, you could hear the Sunderland fans there over on that safe standing zone. Again, some looking to break from the edge of the six-yard box. Ek was out in midfield. Ek were on, on his own. On his the... own at the back. Nobody's picked him up. It's swung in by Aushish. He's headed out to Ek. Brings it down on his left foot. Crashes the ball against Wintle. And uh, it comes out to Neil in midfield and back to Styles, who swings it He's over offside. to the right-hand side to an offside Aushish. The assistant here just waiting for that ball to drop on his foot before he raised the flag. Free kick to Cardiff City, who trailed 2-0. We're five minutes into the second half. Everywhere we go, you can hear over on that far side. 
some journey to make on the Easter weekend, or credit to them, the Sunderland fans. The ball is played out by Horfath on the right to Nat Phillips. Joe went to close him down, he has to play it back to the goalkeeper, Mike Dodds, being told off, I think, by the fourth official. The ball comes back to Gutas. See, they're going nowhere, are they? Again, the you know. press is keeping them back, Cardiff. Now Sheesh this time, and now Barr on NG. And NG managed to dig the ball out, but again, Bowler's struggling, and Styles puts the ball out for a throw to Cardiff on the far side. 2-0 to Sunderland, live on BBC Radio Newcastle. The throw will be taken by NG, drops for Aaron Ramsey. 84 caps for Cardiff, the 33-year-old now. The ball out again for another throw. for Wales. Yeah. <laughs> Who else would it be? Yeah. I Who thought else? you said Cardiff. Oh, did it? Well, did I say Cardiff? I think so. He's also actually got caps for Great Britain. So you can add to be to fair, the he, he, start, he, he came into the team when he was what 17, didn't he? Yeah. Then went to what? Then went to Arsenal. Yeah. And fantastic player. Well, his career yeah. has taken him all over including Juventus, Juventus yeah. and last season he played for Nice and he signed for Cardiff in the summer to win his 84th Cardiff cap. Now, 84 cut Wales caps, 21 goals, but here comes Ramsey trying to get the ball through the middle, but uh, unfortunately from his point of view his pass back was intercepted and here's Hume on the right-hand side. Slips it to Aushish, back to Hume on the right. First time ball in is somehow scooped away by Gutas and then hooked over the head of Hume by O'Dowda for a throw to Sunderland down the right hand side. Hume gets the ball back. How old is he now? 36, did you say? He is 33. 33 years old. Hume's throw into Job in the penalty area. Hooks it down the right for Rig, who oh, swings unlucky. it. Put it, lost a little bit of balance, and the ball goes round the back of the goal for a goal kick to Cardiff. Nat Phillips, Nathaniel Phillips gets oh. the ball forward. Ramsey tried to intercept, but uh, it's fallen to Equa, who gets it at the second attempt back to Ballard. Didu goes to close him down. Ballard, nice Great ball through the middle. Down the left of the penalty area for Aushish. Now Sheesh now, he's got Ng in front of him, slips it through to Neil. Neil tries to put this oh. in the right-hand side, but across the face of goal and behind. I think he'll be kicking himself there. I think he probably thinks he should have scored, Dan yeah. Neil. If it was on target, it was a goal. But yeah. again, good run by Ashish. Equa again breaking up play. You know, and I just was going to say, you've got somebody who'd have just brought on who's, what, six foot four, and is still trying to play out from the back. You've got to go route one. He's an imposing figure for Mara Didu. 27 caps for Senegal, 11 goals in those 27 games. Here's Equa. Puts one high up in the air, looking for Job. It's headed away by Gutas, the Greek. And uh, Rig then gets his head on it. Aushish back to O'Neill. In the middle, Ballard Great finds pass. Dan Neal. Neal quickly to bar on the left side. Job's right arm raised briefly. He's in the penalty area. Comes back into Neal. Neal behind him then on the left to Styles, And back to Ballard on the halfway line. Slips it to O'Neill. Forwards to Equa. Back to O'Neill. Forwards again, Neal. And uh, sorry, Riggs no, hauled a... down by O'Dowder. Free kick to Sunderland on the right side of central midfield, a third of the way inside the Cardiff City half. I tell you, this is like the old Sunderland out there moving the ball. You know, Cardiff can't get nowhere near him at the moment. At the moment you know, and no. you can see the Sunderland players in enjoying this, aren't they? Equa, lovely ball played over the top. Was, Job takes it on him. the right side of the penalty. It looks for Aushish. Aushish just trying to want Job again, who's had to come back out. Dowder pushes him out, Neil in the middle. And Neil now to Styles, saying play it down the left to Barr. Barr slips slightly, but still comes inside and G. And Barr still has it, leaves it for Neil. Neil getting forwards down the left, blocked by Bowler. No foul, says the referee. The ball goes out for a goal kick. 56th minute, Cardiff City nil, Sunderland two. 
We also know that if Sunderland do win this afternoon, that will take them to 51 points, and that's safety. Yeah, yeah, They're not yeah. going to... Puts to bed any talk of relegation. Didu managed to get his head on it, but Rig gets his foot on it, but then Dowda is uh, brought down by uh, Sheesh, a little harsh, I think, that free kick. But the referee, well, he's let play go on, even though, again, the ball free kick taken from nowhere near the incident. On halfway, picked up by Aaron Ramsey, twists away and then gives the ball, ball away, away again. to Barr, to Neil, to Joe, back to Barr. That's a foul. Hacked down by Unji. So there'd be a booking now. And I think, well, I agree with you there, bearing in mind the booking for Styles earlier in the game and Unji is being a bit niggly and gives away this free kick on the left of central midfield, halfway inside the Cardiff City half, 57th minute. Oh, Sheesh over the ball again. Short pass behind him to Neil. Now to O'Neill. Down the right here, Rig ahead of him, and so is Hume. Rig down the right touchline. Rig, he's got the overlap coming from O'Neill. He slips it into Hume in the penalty area. He gets pushed off the ball by O'Dowda. And Callum O'Dowda now racing away with this and then having to play it back behind into NG. Forwards again to O'Dowda and then in goes Styles. Great challenge, strong. The ball breaks for Wintle. Comes to NG, plays it back here to Nat Phillips on loan from Liverpool. To Dimitris Gutas and out to Aaron Ramsey on the left here. And Ramsey, short pass inside to Wintle. Back to Ramsey, swings it across to the right wing where it's headed behind, uh, headed away by Styles straight to Perry and G and NG plays it back to Wintle Wintle now back to NG and he plays it inside to Joe Rawls, Rawls wide on the right here with ahead of him Wintle but it's come back eventually well done to Phillips and now Gutas out to the left wing Grant, Carl and Grant on loan from West Bromwich Albion Cutting inside, looking for Didu, but cut out by Ballard. Ballard gets in front, plays it through the middle to Aushish in the centre circle. Wintle tried to get his foot on it and eventually does get the ball and then rolls it down the right to Bowler. Josh Bowler running at Styles into the penalty area on the right. Styles trying to stay with him. The cross is played, but it will run away here and then a big push in the back of Rig by Grant. And it's a free kick, and it's Peter Brunel, Carlisle United 3 in League 1. It's Cardiff 0, Sunderland 2, here at the Cardiff City Stadium, live on BBC Radio Newcastle. Patterson comes out all in yellow, he is tonight, this afternoon, to take the free kick, passes it to... Luke O'Neill, O'Neill still coming out with this and then uh, playing it to Styles on the left who drives it up looking for Joe but across goes Gutas and it's headed away by Ballard the forward ball now with Joe Rawls in the centre circle we're up to the hour mark pretty much O'Dowder plays it back behind him Rawls Rawls forwards now again to Callum O'Dowder 27 caps for Republic of Ireland and he plays the ball through and behind for a goal kick Queen's Park Rangers nil Birmingham 1 so Patterson just slips the ball Peterborough 1 Carlisle 3 Patterson again with the ball and uh, just strolling out with it towards the edge of the area. Ramsey's in front of him. Patterson just passes it then to his left to Ballard. Oh. Bowler closes him down. The ball breaks though for Dan Neal. Bowler's left on the floor in the penalty area. Play goes on. And now here's Ramsey, edge of the area. And a block by Hume for the corner to Cardiff. And Bowler still bowled over. <laughs> He's 
writhing uh, around. There's no bit penalty. In front of the referee, it's a 50 50 no. challenge there. Sitting up, frustration etched on his face, and he's Come hobbling, on, about, he? hobbling about. He's I making laugh. a right meal of face. But he is he? seemingly making a meal of it. Joe Rawls then to take this first Cardiff corner, a test for Sunderland from the left hand side. And Jeremy Simpson's credentials being questioned. As Rawls, corner kick, lands on the head of MG and is caught safely by Anthony Patterson. He rolls the ball out here to 09. Uh, Wimbledon 1, Harrogate 1. 09 into the middle, Equa. Back to Luke O'Neill. O'Neill now to Hume on the right wing. Back again to O'Neill, who plays it across the 18 yard line to Dan Ballard. Ballard back to Patterson. He drives this out to the right wing, looking for Hume. Gets his head on it. Rig trying to get in front of Carl and Grant. Grant lets the ball drop out for a throw to Sunderland. Well done, Hume. He does well in the air, doesn't he? For the size Strong. of him. Yeah. Trey Hume. And he comes down to take the throw now for Sunderland. 20 yards from the corner on the right. Sunderland still lead 2 0. Job, Oshish, Rig. Oshish taps it back to Hume, slips it back inside again to Hume. Great cross. Who crosses looking oh, for Bar. Bar, 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 Bar. Climbed all over the back of him to try and head it. <laughs> Got nowhere near it. And there's another substitution coming for Cardiff. Callum Robinson, isn't it? The forward. Another Republic of Ireland international. Was he at West Brom as well? He was at West Brom for a couple of seasons. Yeah. Joined Cardiff in 2022. And he looks like he's going to come on but for who do you think he'll come on for Carl and Grant I'm not no, yeah I'm maybe Carl and Grant here is uh, oh surely that's a foul is it on our sheesh and there's a card coming out here in the middle from the referee yeah and who's that for is it to, I think it's good it is it Joe Rawls was it Joe Rawls yeah or Wintle you know it might be Wintle who got the card then We'll see the replay here. Joel yeah, Rolls. Wintle, it's Wintle. Joe Rolls, six, isn't it? No, Wintle, Wintle, six. Sorry, sorry, it is. So, the first yellow card for Cardiff. Yeah, Mark Timantner, Mishish in the second half. Stop him. They've been, yeah, they've clearly... Rolls is coming off. Rowles, they say here, is coming off. And uh, QPR 1, Birmingham 1. So 2-0 to Sunderland. Didu's being spoken to by the referee at the moment. And a free kick will be taken by Styles eventually to Neil in the centre on the centre spot down the right roll by O'Neill it's going to be a bit too ambitious I think for Rig down in the corner and the ball rolls out at the corner and Elise and Hjelda are both receiving instructions at the moment from Alessandro Bartarini, whether that's going to be a double switch at the back. Here's Ballard, nods it down to O'Neill, hooked away by O'Dowda. Equa nods it away, but Ramsey gets on the end of it and finds Robinson wide on the left hand side now. And Callum Robinson swings a ball in, but Ballard heads it away from the edge of the six yard box. O'Dowda on the end of it. <coughs> Gutas cut out by Oshish. Comes back in the middle, Phillips on halfway, leaves it then on the right for Ramsey. 
back to Phillips. Phillips to Gutas. And down the left-hand side to O'Dowda. Inside then to Grant. Back into the centre circle, Aaron Ramsey. Trying to find the run of NG or bounce away ahead of him behind for a goal kick. Yeah, they might go fight back the back, Nick. I think they'll take Styles off, wouldn't they? That left yes, back. Yeah. And then um, either Yelda will come in there, Alesi, one of them will go and play left wing back. I think this is going to be with half a mind to Monday, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think maybe Rig might come off. Rig and Styles, I think. Well, we're three quarters of the. I think you might well be right. We're three quarters of the way through the game. Sunderland still leading 2 0 as Neil tries to find Job again on the shoulder of Gutas down right, the right. left. And uh, it gets it out to the wing. It's kept in, played inside to Aaron Ramsey. Out to Bowler. Bowler stumbles in the challenge. Job gets in hard and drives the ball into touch for a throw. Norwich won, Plymouth won. And. Uh, This just short of the halfway line. The throw comes into the centre eventually. Here on the left, Gutas to O'Dowda. O'Dowda down the left to Carlin Grant inside to Robinson who pushes oh, the ball. Oh, he's out not got says, a foul for that. That's ridiculous. That was barely any contact. And a free kick given on the touchline to Cardiff City. Back to Gutas. Job trying to win it off the Greek centre-half and eventually well done, does. Well done. And uh, Gutas trying to foul him, but he's found Oshish. Oshish away down the right-hand side here now. And uh, inside of him is Job, the French winger. Well, it goes down, claims he was fouled. O'Dowd is hauling him up. It's a throw to Cardiff City. And Helder's stripped off and ready to come on for... Sunderland Ramsey back to Phillips Hull nil Stoke one O'Dowda on the left wing 68th minutes the ball goes out throw to Cardiff again O'Dowda will take this on halfway and uh, Elise is going to come on as well I think, in fact, it might be Pembele. Pembele, that is. It's Pembele is going to come on, yeah. isn't it? So now, here with Neil, through to Equa in the middle. Equa still coming through the centre, trying to take it on his no. left, and the shot is crazy. You've got to play Rig in. He's Chris, Chris Rig's made a great run. That shot sails high over the bar into the Cardiff fans, high up in the stand away. He's nearly put it right. out in the stadium. He did. 2-0, it remains to Sunderland in the 69th minute. And uh, Hjolda still waits, Pembele is preparing himself, the ball up towards uh, Didu. Out for a throw to Cardiff City on the left-hand side. O'Dowder again, halfway, left in the blue of Cardiff City, hurls it in the air over Didiou, and it hooked away, an overhead kick by O'Neill, up to Neil, does well in the challenge from Wintle, gets the ball to Rig, and now Rig gets it back to O'Neill. in fact, it's Mundell who's coming on. Not Pembele, although they look very like haircuts and all, and so Hjelda and Mundell will be Sunderland's first two replacements. The ball here with Carlin Grant of Cardiff City. Down the left of the penalty area to O'Dowder, tries to dribble through, curls one towards the oh, ball, the penalty spot, and catches kick. Ballard free in the face. Kick. Yeah, I think um, Rig will come off. Do you think Styles or Bar? Well, Hjelda presumably will go left, left back. back, so Styles will come off. And, yeah, Riggs coming off, Mundell's replacing yeah. Rigg. Young lad's done well. He has. He's not afraid to put himself about, is he? And uh, Styles, absolutely right, the other.
can uh, Sunderland see this out? 71 minutes nearly played. Applause for Tom Lynn, I think. Was that for the substitutes? It's difficult to say in the last few minutes because I know they're trying to arrange or organise applause on Monday in the Blackburn Again, game for but, Tom Lynn yeah, be Blackburn in the uh, 66th minute. We're just past that, but uh, worth remembering this afternoon, Tom Lynn, thoughts with his family as the substitutions made. Kjeldron at left-back, Mundle along with Job up front at the moment, Hume wide, Patterson with a free kick, swings the ball out wide left to Kjeldron in his bright yellow boots, heads it on, and then headed away by Phillips, Kjeldron got on the end of it again, headed it into the centre, it's picked up by Wintle, who plays it out to O'Dowda on the left here, forwards then to Grant, back to O'Dowda, and the Mundle's immediately on his case, but O'Dowda's got round him and gets away, and Mundle tried to get in front of him again, but he plays it down for O'Nine to get in front of Grant, and then slip the ball out for a throw to Cardiff on the left. Hartlepool 1, Halifax 0. Robinson, Equa all over him, but the ball played back to Wintle. Wintle inside then to Robinson, to uh, Grant, who's fouled. He lost fouled. control of the ball as well, to be truthful. Well, the free kick given to Cardiff. Grant picks himself up. Aaron Ramsey's going to take the free kick. Referee ushering Barr back. Ten yards. 73rd minute. Ramsey swings the ball across the penalty area. Flag Offside. is up. And a free kick. Ramsey can't believe it. Patterson will come out to take the free kick for Sunderland and leaves it in the end for Ballard. Ballard taps it back to Patterson down the right wing, headed away by a doubter from Mundell into Ryan Wintle and uh, he plays it back to the goalkeeper, Horvath. Tacks it with his right foot, Job goes to close him down, the keeper gets the ball over the halfway line, Ballard wins the header there in the middle, it drops for Robinson who gets it out to O'Dowder on the left, Mundell gives chase and Mundell pushed O'Dowder enough to put him off balance and the referee's given Cardiff the free kick. Cardiff enjoying a little bit of a purple patch at the moment. I think Sunderland need to somehow break that up again. Yeah, what they've done is they've crossed the halfway line, haven't they? <laughs> they have indeed, they have indeed, but they still trail 2-0. Grant's crossed the far post caught by Patterson from the left of the penalty area. Kirill Louis-Dreyfus watching on from the front of the director's box alongside uh, Joe Bellingham's dad. Equa plays the ball on down the left wing. Bar inside to Neil. Neil on the halfway gets it through to Aushish. Aushish head down wide on the left, leaves it for Bar. Inside to Neil again, now to Job in the middle, who immediately gets it out on the right to Hume. Hume now just chipping it up, looking for Job's header. Oh, Under pressure, corner. he's won the corner. Great play. Phillips, I think, got a touch to it. Great so, football. Very good football. Joe bravely flinging himself at that and getting his head on the end of it, but uh, just a touch on the head of Nat Phillips to put it behind. Oh, sheesh, looks knackered, to put it bluntly. As he comes he's down quite shifting, hasn't he? Corey's done well this afternoon. A yeah. couple of mistakes, a couple of balls given away, but on the whole, he's just covered every blade of grass. Scored the penalty that gave Sunderland the lead in the 12th minute. 15 minutes or so left. Now Sheesh with his fifth corner from the right-hand side. Drives us in, headed away by Gutas. Ooh. And then uh, spectacularly over the top from Neil. Sheffield Wednesday won, Swansea won. Swansea equalising in think, that game. I think Dan Neil's well. getting carried away there. He's being trying in to Wales. Equa. No, he's <laughs> not being in Wales. He's a rugby player. Go for three points. <laughs> <laughs> another change here we come is Yaku Mighty the Ivory Coast international another forward for Cardiff that's Norwich 2 Plymouth 1 the ball bounces through to 
Ethan Horvath, and he rolls it to Gutas, out to O'Dowda, up towards Didu. O'Nai got a foot to it, now Equa puts it in the air, drops down on the head of Gutas, up to Didu, now Robinson in the middle. And, oh, you've got to uh, win well, it, Equa. Equa didn't make the... They didn't win the ball, and now Grant back inside into Equa's path, but O'Dowda whips it off his feet, straight to Dan Neal. Neal still inside his half, just now into the Cardiff half. He rolls it through to Joe Pier, lets it run through to Mundell. O'Dowda made half a challenge, no. the ball rolled into the penalty area. And but it's not a bad ball, Phillips. but there's nobody there. There's no, there wasn't anybody there. And I don't think he intended to keep no. it that low, actually. I think he miskicked it. So the change being made by Cardiff now, and it's a Bowler who's coming off. Josh Bowler. And so Yaku Matey, all right, Matey. Matey. Comes on. The Matey. mighty Matey. Matey, Matey. Another six foot one centre forward. Signed from Reading, actually, in the, uh, the summer, even though he'd uh, spent a little spell at Sosho, Reading predominantly, where he's been playing his football. And here now, down the left, is Barr. Into the middle to Aushish. Little flick, lovely little deft touch, and Job now to Barr, who'd be oh, offside. offside. He had uh, O'Dowder on his shoulder, and I have to say, I've been quite impressed with O'Dowder at left-back. Since he dropped back there, he's a bit of a Trey Hume character, isn't he, in terms of... the. His uh, yeah. never-say-die attitude. 28-year-old Republic of Ireland international. Sunderland looking, are they another change? Hamir. Hamir. What can Hamir do this afternoon? The ball kicked up the other end. Aaron Ramsey on the right slips it inside here at the... Edge of the penalty, or MG's cross, Ooh. and uh, Matey is trying to get the ball off O'Nion, who gets the ball out there. for throat. Misunderstanding there between Ballard and Patterson. <coughs> We're in the 79th minute now. If you're just joining us on BBC Radio Newcastle, Sunderland still lead 2-0. That was the lead they held at half-time. And G trying to get through and forwards. He wins a corner. On the right-hand side. This is where concentration, Nick, here. Sunderland did not want to concede a goal now. And then let Cardiff have a good ten minutes or more. As the ball headed away behind by Phillips. He got above everybody else, but couldn't direct the header on target. Who's him here coming on for? He will come on for... Sheesh. Well, now Sheesh looks... Absolutely worn out, doesn't he? So you, you, I wonder, will Job just drop back then to the ten yeah. position? And uh, Hamir up front, obviously. Here's Ballard to bring the ball out to Dan Neal on the left-hand side. He plays it out wider oh, again to Bar, back into Equa in the middle, off Job to Equa oh. and Mundell. It's cut out by Gutas before it got through to him and he'd have been away. And now another attempt as Mundell tries to get round. Phillips, Phillips gets in front and gets the ball back to Horvath, the goalkeeper, and kicks it up into the centre circle. Ballard hooks it on straight to Aaron Ramsey and then to Didu. Gets it out to the left wing here, Grant. Grant taking this on, still taking it on. O'Dowder wide of him, O'Dowder on the left-hand side now, almost on the goal line. And he's got Hume in front of it, crashes off Hume behind for another Cardiff corner. Huddersfield 1, Coventry 2. Aaron Ramsey goes down to take this corner kick. Hamir's still waiting to come on. And, of course, all the big men are up now, and there are a lot of big men up for Cardiff. Concentration. It's whipped in here, and it's uh, headed... Oh. oh, it skims the bar. I think it was Phillips again. Phillips it's, again, is it? It's just... Yeah. No, it's Gutas. It's Gutas. A four. Yeah. Six foot four Greek, and his header skimmed the bar. <coughs> so the substitution will be made. Ashish is the player coming off, as we suspected. 
Well, he's really put in a shift, our Sheesh, this afternoon. Applauds the Sunderland fans who reciprocate. He waves to them as he comes off along the halfway line. Adil Ashish, scorer of the 12-minute penalty, which he smashed home through the middle. And high fives with Hamir. And he jogs on into the centre circle. Ballard takes a short pass from the corner of the six-yard box back from... Patterson and then plays it out wide to 09 on the right. He swings his foot through it. And Scutas who heads it on to O'Dowda. Wintle back to O'Dowda who can't keep it in. Does he know he does keep it in? But it drops for Mundell. He loses Wintle, slips the ball inside here now in the middle to Job. Job trying to find Barr just inside the penalty area on his right. Oh, oh. inches away How's from creeping in at the far post. Excellent play, well done, Mundell. Job again. That would have wrapped things up. Well done. And they'd be kicking themselves, really. You know, again, we've had two or three occasions they, where um, we... Each time they try to place it. Place it. Hit the target. And that was, as they, inches wide, it whisked past the foot of the right post. Still 2-0 then to Sunderland, 83rd minute here at the Cardiff City Stadium. The Ball headed away from central midfield in the Sunderland half by Dan Ballard. Now Equa trying to get it forward up towards Hamir. Phillips gets above him as it's shoved by Job in the back of uh, Wintle. Robinson takes the free kick quickly across to O'Dowda here on the left-hand side. Forwards down the left to Grant. Grant back to O'Dowda. Back again to Gutas. Forwards to Grant. Hume goes in, gets his foot to it. But it's uh, straight to Phillips. Phillips out to O'Dowda on the left. And O'Dowda forced back by Mundell to play it to Gutas. Gutas to Phillips. Brings this out. Hamir gives chase. Up towards Didu. O'Neill gets his head on it. Ballard hooks it away for a throw to Cardiff on the left hand side. Taken. Comes back to Grant. Behind him is O'Dowda. O'Dowder into Grant, now Robinson blocked by Job. Job coming away with this down the right-hand side, sprinting into the Cardiff half, pausing for a moment, looks up, what's his options, finds Hamir down the right edge of the penalty area, forced slightly wide, comes back to Job. Job now in the middle, short pass to Neil, back to Job at the edge of the centre circle to O'Neill, to Job again, and Job just side puts it to Hume on the right forwards to Equa, back to Job on halfway, little turn and twist that gets away from Robinson and now Job looking for the run of Mundell he's onside, down towards the goal line, keeps it in well turns done. and now has to size up his options, Job is behind him and Job back to Equa back again to Hume and we've played 84 minutes, here's Equa down the right now, on the touchline, trying to come in past Robinson and O'Dowda and Mundell's brought down surely by O'Dowda. Oh, it's a foul! That was a clear foul, the referee's given nothing. O'Dowda wrapped his leg round Mundell and pulled him down. The referee let play go on. And now it's with Phillips on the right-hand side. Nat Phillips brings it forward, he wants help. He's closed down by Hamir, he, play, he plays it back to the goalkeeper. Out here to Gutas. And now O'Dowda again, back to Gutas. Sunderland still leading. 2-0 in the 85th minute. Phillips up towards the halfway line, wide on the right, chips it over the top. O'Neill goes up with Grant. Grant clutches his head. The ball drops for Didu. Play stopped for a head injury yeah, to Carlin Grant. Kick. He's given a free kick. And he's given a free kick as well. On the right-hand side of midfield. Finally, he's decided it's a head injury and called for the physios to run on. So we'll get some more time added on at the end of the the game, something to see this out. If they could get a third, it'd be nice. If they can keep a clean sheet, it'd be even better. Cardiff have been a different team, really, in the second half. Had a bit more purpose about them. 
But they haven't really caused Sunderland any problems, not really, have they? You, have know, they you look no, at Patterson, has he had a puffing, but not a Patterson great hasn't had to make a save. No. And um, I think Dak's going to come on. He's certainly sitting with his top off below us. And uh, wait, wait, that's not because it's a particularly hot afternoon, so I'm only assuming that the reason is that he's going to get a few minutes at the end of the game. I'm sure Dak would love to play on Monday against Blackburn. That'll mm. be uh, one he's pencilled in to play in. Grant's still receiving treatment over on the far side. Southampton won, Middlesbrough won on the south coast. That was in the 90th minute. Uh, Grant's up on his feet. Michael Proctor having a word with Bradley Dack. And uh, a free kick then to Cardiff City. Grant <coughs> walks off the pitch on the far side. Ramsey will take the free kick. And uh, they've just got to see this out. A bit of pushing and shoving at the back of the area. Didu, and the ball swept in, and well it's uh, out from Ballard. Robinson trying to drive it back in, but Neil passes it out Go here on. now. Go on, Hamir, to run. Mundell with Hamir in the middle, and he's got Bar forwards as well. Hamir says pass it through. It's slipped through to Bar. Hamir's got to get back onside. Bar. Oh, oh he's brought down, and it's a corner. A bad touch by Bar. Bad touch. He's he allowed the defender down. to get back in. Yeah, he did. He, he's gone down. Dax waiting to come on now. And it's a sixth Sunderland corner. Who's going to take this one? Bar is back up on his feet. Um, as far as the players coming off, actually, I tell you what, Nick, Mack will take the corner. We yeah. nearly lost our bet. Which one was that? The nil-nil. No. What else do we say? What else do we say? Guaranteed to happen. It will rain. No. Oh, they bar will come off in the 60th minute. <laughs> bar will be substituted. Will be, yeah, we, we didn't say what minute. We, we just said that he'll be. Yeah, we said that he'll yeah, be yeah, yeah. substituted, but he's done well today. He's done well. Yeah. He's done really well. Dak replaces him. Um, Mundell's going to take the corner from the left-hand side. Yeah, you're right about that. I was thinking, because we said 60 minutes, but he's done well. He's lasted another 28 minutes. Sunderland lead 2-0. Dak goes down with Mundell, and I think Dak's going to take the corner instead of Mundell in front of the Sunderland fans. Short pass to Mundell into the box to Job, who pokes it right back out for Dan Neal, who slips it inside to Equa at the front of the centre circle, back to Neal. And uh, now down the left wing to Dak, inside to Job, back to Dak, back again to Neil. Yeah, he's Job, off the ball, that. He's been knocked off the ball. That's off the ball, off referee, the ball. right in front of you. And uh, he's allowed play to go on. And now it's intercepted in the middle by O'Neill. A pass from Cardiff. Uh, Job getting himself to his feet, the ball on the touchline on the far side. Somehow kept in, Job back up. And the ball breaks Go on, Amir. here for Amir. Go on, it's son. Amir, edge of the area, tries oh, to slip it through unlucky. under the keeper, but the keeper's blocked it. Unlucky. Just a not quite enough self-conviction from Amir to drive that under or past Horfath. Thought that was the moment. I thought from, I thought that was the moment as well. But it's not. It's still 2-0 to Sunderland. And the Hamir column remains blank. As O'Dowder now on the left-hand side, and we are in the last minute of the 90. And here's Equa, slips it to Hamir, back to Dak in the middle of the Sunderland half, Ballard to O'Neill. And uh, we've six got six minutes, minutes Hamir to get a notch in the column and here he is slips it back to Dan Neal off the ball Neal, Job's offside off the ball kick. he's got a referee it's a foul off the ball man and Job scores it won't count and uh, Humes there's no advantage there uh, the foul off the ball was on uh, Dak it's on 0-9 isn't it oh is it oh, sorry 0-9 yeah sorry 0-9 
and uh, QPR, QPR 2 Birmingham 1 that's not great news for Birmingham Hull 0 Stoke 2 here Cardiff City 0 Sunderland 2 they've got um, five minutes to see out the clock which is meant to show you in the stadium how much time left has stopped let's hope Sunderland don't with now less than five minutes of the six added on to play Hume gets a goal touch kick. to this does he or not no it's gone behind it's a goal kick Grant went up with him Patterson is lot that most of the bowl is empty Cardiff fans have decided they're not going to get anything from the game they are all leaving the Sunderland fans are not they're going to celebrate heartily at full time unless something absolutely dramatic happens in the next four and a half minutes Patterson with the goal kick a little reminder of those records of course that Sunderland haven't lost any of their last 15 league matches on a good Friday since 1969 uh, they've scored now 100 and 28 league goals on Good Friday. Only Grimsby have scored more, 130. And Cardiff have still not won back-to-back -back league games on a Good Friday. Who says there's nothing such as an omen as Mundell play through by Joe Mundell, saved by Horvath. Yeah. Zach was trying to follow through, but O'Dowd has somehow managed to get... Oh, Wintle's managed somehow to get the ball away. Excellent. Good effort by Mundell. So close to being 3-0... Hume with the throw, back to Equa, back again to O'Neill inside then to Ballard, wide to Hjelda, who in fairness has barely seen the ball since he came on in the 71st minute, he's had so little to do. And the ball out for a throw to Sunderland on the far side. We played nearly three minutes of the minimum six. Job's done well today. Yeah. Really well. The... Uh, scoreboard's now flicked into life above us with the time remaining just over three minutes three minutes now exactly and G heads the ball away for Cardiff up to halfway Robinson slips it inside to Grant in the centre circle behind him Wintle out to O'Dowda back to Gutas who had to be quick to react with Mundell and Hamir on his case it's straight to Neil through the middle again to Hamir slipping it to Dak Dak in the penalty area left foot blocked by Phillips comes out on the far side as the rain falls again here now for Job who's bulldozed Brilliant. down excellent Hello, great, great battling reacts. great Joe battling whips his hand at the supporters Huddersfield 1 Coventry 3 Mike Dodds shares a joke with the fourth official, Scott Tallis. The rain is driving down. Sunderland fans and Sunderland players don't care a jot. It is driving down again here, despite the blue sky above the uh, eastern end of the stadium. Short pass from Dak, the free kick. Dak gets it back, plays it to Neil, forwards again to Job. He's had a good game today as well, Job. Back to Ballard. Ballard out to Dan Neal wide on the left. Dak inside to Job. Job back to Ballard. Ballard now to O'Neill in the Sunderland half. We've got uh, what? A minute and a half left. Mundell. Middlesbrough have drawn one all at Southampton. Sunderland lead 2 0 here at Cardiff. Ball comes back to Ballard now to O'Neill. Back into the middle to Ballard, across on the left to Hjelda. And Hjelda lifts the high ball over the top, looking to try and get Dak through, headed away by Phillips. Dak tries to win it back from Unji. He gets it into O'Dowda. And uh, we've got one minute left of the minimum six. Here's O'Dowda trying to get up to the edge of the Sunderland penalty area. Leaves it for Grant on the left-hand side. Grant has Hume and Equa to get past. The block by Hume, and O'Neill picks it up, takes it away to the right wing. He's pushed over, was he, by Grant? Referee says no, it's a throw to Cardiff City on the left-hand side, which will be taken by Callum O'Dowda. O'Dowda takes the throw to Ramsey. 
back to O'Dowda, battling to win it back is Mundell, and uh, eventually he's gone corner. over a corner, just couldn't quite keep it in. Sunderland do not want to concede a goal now. With 20 seconds remaining, this corner will be taken by uh, Wintle, I think. It's whipped it in towards the far post, headed away by Ballard, into no man's land over on the far side. Phillips gives chase, Equa goes with him. Five seconds of the minimum, six left. It comes back to Grant. He whips the ball back in the area, and uh, Matey trying to get on the end of it. Corner. Gets a corner, another corner. A fifth corner for Cardiff in the game. This time, now time in the up. seventh minute. Grant jogs down to take the corner for Cardiff City, who are trailing 2-0. Sunderland will want to keep the clean sheet. They're going to get three points. It'll take them to safety. As the ball whipped in by Grant, and O'Dowd are trying to get on the end of it, and Patterson's got behind it, and the full-time whistle's blown. Boos from the Cardiff fans, sheer delight from the Sunderland fans on the far side, who still remain, not one of them's left this afternoon, to see Sunderland win, well, first win in some time. First Sunderland. win in seven, is it? And uh, a Eight. clean sheet. Yeah, clean sheet. I took a lot, a lot of positives out of that game, Nick, and uh, you've got to say that was like not, not the old Sunderland, but the Sunderland what we've seen at the beginning of the season. You know, you've got to say that we've won that game at a canter. Cardiff was second best. Yes, the first five, ten minutes of the game, they started on the front foot, but after we got older the game, you know, it could have been more than two. It could have been, I think, the... The fact they were trying to place their shots rather than just smash them, yeah. the, the scoreline could have been uh, a lot greater, but um, they'll be happy enough, three points and a clean sheet. So that's something to take into Monday's game against Blackburn Rovers at home. And uh, players returning, Dak got a few minutes at the end there. Didn't see Elise say we've got Evans to come back as well. And Roberts. 51 and Roberts, who's on the bench again. Uh, who was on the bench this afternoon and will doubtless be involved on Monday. Uh, and 51 points, you know, that, that safety net, if you like. Yeah. Well, again, you know, you, you look at the way we performed today and, you know, the question is, why, can't we, why haven't we been performing like that week in, week out? Maybe we've got one or two, shall we say, so-called senior players back. You know, you've got the likes of Ballard and all nine back in the heart of defence, which makes a huge difference. I think Bellingham, after having that rest, he looked refreshed today, he, he was excellent. And Ashish, you know, playing in that 10 roll caused numerous problems. The players have all gone across to the Sunderland fans over on that far side, over in the corner. And uh, Luca Nyans taking his shirt off, walking up to the advertising hoarding. Someone's seen there that he's uh, handed the shirt to. It cost the club a fortune. <laughs> it's Luke O'Neill. They'll take, it, they'll, they'll Luke take it out of his wage. And uh, off comes Bradley Dark and shakes the hand of Michael Proctor. Luke O'Neill comes back bare chested with the captain's armband around his uh, arm, which is now just pulled off. And uh, Hamir, is, he's making the most of this, Hamir. He's going to have his moment. Should have scored, perhaps, so the argument goes. Well, at least he he's had through. a shot on target, hasn't he? He did have a shot on target, you know, well saved by the goalkeeper but the players now heading off heading back down the tunnel hey guys, be a much sweeter um, journey back to the North East tonight Happy for Sunderland's well, players thanks, uh, after that cheers. much needed long awaited win cheers, and Mike cheers. Dodds will be delighted cheers. and I think he'll be pleased with cheers, the, the manner cheers, of the win so after the dear. criticism David he laid at the players door for the uh, draw uh, with yeah, Queen's Park Rangers um, and they're very tired. I think Pierre Thanks, Ecker, everybody for uh, is in. one of the last players a, to be heading off commentary video that last been with Job, uh, who again, I think he had a good game this yeah, afternoon. Job, Job, he looks refreshed and, um, since the international break. Dan Neil and Mundler having a debate about and, one um, ball or another that should or shouldn't have been played. Big smiles from 
Dan Neal, oh, Chris Monday. Rigg played his but part as well this afternoon, waits for Pierre Equa and Joe as they head down the tunnel here.